Hey! hey! What a Hello! Hot and swampy Wednesday. Here we are. Gross. Fine. Oh, gross indeed. In fact, the, uh, the first email I see as the show starts up comes from uh, a guy named Seth who sends a picture of his jeans from yesterday. Oh, no. And it says, yesterday swamp ass. And it's... Ew, I don't... <clears throat> uh, it's, it's vile. <laughs> so it's denim jeans. I enjoyed it. And just where, you know, where the tushy goes, it's dark denim because it's sweaty. Ew. Ew, indeed. Nice. That's like measuring the flood line. <laughs> In Alton? <laughs> Mississippi, like, look at this line on my jeans. That's from 93. <laughs> the muddy Swamp Mississippi. Ass series. Oh, <laughs> gross. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, it almost it almost like wicked down to like the the back of his knees. Ah, man. What was he doing? He Just need, being. He used to work inside an air conditioner like we do. Seth, what do you do for a living? <laughs> we need to know. You know, I noticed, cable guy. I noticed down on uh, on Olive here. You know, they're 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 constructing some kind of huge building. Yeah. Did you notice when coming in? They're working overnight. Oh, I didn't oh, notice dang. that. Yeah, they're working over. I don't blame them. Time to work, oh, right? Oh, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, being outside doing any kind of manual labor in this weather is not healthy. Hat goes off to you people doing Hat it. Hat goes off. And shirt goes off because it's hot out. And pants. <laughs> Just naked. Naked Just construction. Get naked. Mm -hmm. Let's everybody get naked. Get on a... Get, yeah, get up on the roof. You have to be uh, shingling today. Let's take our clothes off. Let's do it that way. Get that hot tar. <laughs> Methods of mayhem playing in the background. <laughs> Methods of mayhem. Oh, wow, that's right. Do we reference. have that in the system? Oh, Tommy. That was Tommy Lee's group. Yeah. Oh my God. Like it was like a like a kind of rap core. Oh, it was it was at the height of new metal. Yeah, new oh, metal yeah. rap core. If we have this, we need, was people, that adult new metal? People need just a little. Yep, yeah, yeah, we got it. Play a little uh, bit of this for the people. It's contemporary right adult now. new metal. Oh my God. <laughs> You remember this, Rafe? Nah. It's Tommy Lee oh, from dude. Motley Crue. The record said mom had like a big heart or something. No. Uh, M-O-M. So good. This is Tommy Lee rapping. Ugh. Fred Durst is in this too. <laughs> this is the theme song for us. Do you us. remember the video? Was him laying on a bed. With Pam. Gonna get bug naked. <laughs> Ride the, till you hit the spot. Oh man, this is going on the 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 learn liked playlist today. Oh yeah, I'm down, I'm putting this in my Apple Music right now. <laughs> right now. Listen, everything out of time. That was everything out of time. First dance at their Still wedding. Holds up. <laughs> yeah, this is my first dance. Dude, that was right. a special place in her heart. That was one of those things that you're like, whoa, you know what? Maybe this isn't so bad. You know, I'm into Olympus getting all this kind of stuff yeah. this time. I'll, I'll buy this. And the rest of the record was garbage. Uh, garbage. They had another song. Something about on there. electricity or lightning or uh, something? Crash. Oh, I don't remember that one. I'm this sure is I'm, so good. I'm sure I'm mixing all sorts of oh, man. Yeah, interesting they memories had a good, oh, yeah, from the 97, 98 too. time. I'm watching the music video right now, and it's Tommy Lee. The remote control is like the size of his penis. Yes, that's the first thing you see, and then it's just Tommy laying naked in bed with a cool hat on and a necklace. <laughs> with the cool. Is hat he wearing on. a Kangol hat? He is. Yeah. <laughs> Look yeah. at you. Nice. I'm impressed. I know. I, I remember all that stuff. Like I was working at at rock radio back in '99, 2000, at the height of all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm going to get down with all that later after the show. That's amazing. Tommy Lee's going to get a check for three cents. He's going to, man, <laughs> somebody... oh, Holy smoke. I, I knew one day. Two, play, two, two spins. It's going to come back. <laughs> Where'd that yeah, happen? That is good stuff. Now, today's going to be hot and swampy once again today. I think uh, I think we're hot and swampy until Friday. Yeah. Like through Friday. Saturday is going to... Yeah, the weekend's better. Saturday is going to be a little better. But, listen, I never played high school football. You okay? <laughs> yes. Listen, I, <laughs> here's a sentence. Listen, I never played, I never high, school played football. high school football. <laughs> Rafe did. It's a new bucket list of item. He no. Did. Look at this man. Of course he did. <laughs> no. No, no, not a bucket list item for sure. Uh, but what are they doing? Like, you know, the, the high school football season starts. Two days. Making yeah. men out of these boys. You know, there are rules. Oh. 
their role. It's not all about the W's, guys. We gotta we gotta take into account the safety of our kids. Absolutely. That's the problem with today's sports. Mm. Not about the W's. Huh. Are you okay? <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Frank. <laughs> not all about the W's. Ah. Um. So when it was hot and swampy when you were playing, Rafe. Yeah, when you were playing high school. I was talking to Kerry Davis sports. about this yesterday. And what do you say? Just because he's coaching <laughs> and Hazelwood. And I was, I was oh, talking I was to wait- Kerry Davis. I was waiting for you to <laughs> ask a question. I was talking oh. to Kerry Davis about this yesterday. Sorry, my brain. We work with Kerry Davis. My brain talked. Former Pittsburgh Steeler. Yeah. yeah. Coach Super Bowl of, champion. Yeah, Super Bowl champ. Rules. Coach at Hazelwood. Currently engaged in two a days. That was. Mm. But what were you going to ask me? No, so so when it's this kind of weather, weather, yeah, I mean with the heat index, it's 114, right, 115, yeah. wild. And okay, school ends. You know, <laughs> high school ends at what time? Uh, two, three o'clock, three, yeah, yeah, three, three, three something or other. No clue. And it's, yeah, you know, we're at the height of the heat. Yeah, man, it's going to be in some areas over 115 heat yeah. index. Yeah, that's why I think. Didn't Carrie say they're going to start at, was it five or six? Well, they were showing on Channel 2. I, I don't know what school it was, but the, their kid's out there 530 uh, practicing. Yeah. yeah, get it in. Yikes. Chris Bay says, kids are too damn soft these days. No, no, we don't want them to die of heat stroke. <laughs> Even the NFLers yeah. aren't practicing in full pads in this kind of weather. Right? Mm-hmm. right? It's, it's good for kids to make it to adulthood. They, they bring it inside. Yeah, they have like air-conditioned practice facilities. Yeah, you think you think the Chiefs are outside in full pads? No, they are not. In 115 degrees? They're in their air-conditioned. Say what? Well, Andy Reid is. I saw an article. He's one of the few, like 24 NFL teams opted not to do like their training camp, and he did it. He said he's not he deviating, that. and I don't know if he's changed anything, but he's got them out there, dude. They oh, he's got them hungry, out there. dude. All right, fine. They're hungry. Sorry, you start talking about the Chiefs, and I get no, no, no. Fine. So, what did Kerry say? So they're doing they're early doing morning mornings. Practices? I think he said he's good. He said, you know, well, I was like, eh, it was, it's a lot different than the '90s. He goes, oh yeah, we were just out there, two a day practices in the morning, ten o'clock, two o'clock, go have lunch in between. He's like, you didn't even have yet water breaks back then. They didn't even have like now. I think all the kids have just water at at will. Mm-hmm. Because we've, you know, back then it was like a hose hooked up to a PVC yeah. pipe with a bunch of spouts. Dude. And you had to wait till the coach blew the whistle to go Water's for winners, guys. Yeah, Water's much, for dude. winners. You had to wait. You, like, the whole thing was conditioning. Like, you'd be out there running sprints and doing up-downs and doing all that stuff. Pull pads. Just sweating out electrolytes. And then the, <laughs> once every hour, they'd be like, all right, you got a one-minute water break. All right, go ahead. Hydrate up, kids. And you'd guzzle it and feel awful. Yeah, you're busy throwing up half that time. Yeah, exactly. That nice warm plastic through that hose with no oh. telling what bacteria in it. Oh yeah, mm. yeah. But listen, if they can move it inside, I'm sure they're moving it inside or, or having the kids come at five thirty in the morning, we which sounds fun. We didn't have the pads or any of that kind of stuff when we were doing soccer. I mean, what do you think August is like? You know, before the school year starts and the first first bit, all it is is conditioning. It's just running. It's running, 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 running. And at Lindbergh, we had this hill, and we'd end every single ridiculous practice with hills. So. I remember we had people thrown up at least every day for the first two or three weeks. Just because, you know, mm, we're, we're right. kind of all, all out of shape. It's, yeah. it's summer, end of summer. And they got us just uh, running miles and miles and miles each day in, in August heat. And I don't remember doing it in 115 heat index, but I bet you it felt like it. Well, here's what they say on Fox News, an article. Instead of the <laughs> usual after-school practice for the Northwest High School football team, Extreme Heat pushed the practice back several hours on Tuesday. Team practice under the lights after a warm-up inside the school gym. The athletic director said, this is pretty extreme. The team spent 10 minutes in the gym before moving to the school's turf field just after 7 p.m. Uh, we follow the Missouri State High School uh, Activity Association guidelines. We're going either early in the mornings and starting at 5.30 or starting at 7 o'clock at night. According to the Missouri State High School Activity Association guidelines, a heat index between 95 and 105 means practice should be altered. If it's over 105... A practice or contest should be postponed or rescheduled. A more accurate reading comes from a, what they call a wet bulb, which is the sexiest kind of bulb. Absolutely. Yeah, we all know that. We learned about that recently. Mm-hmm. We did. Uh, the wet bulb thermometer measures the heat stress outside. It takes into account the temperature, wind, and sun. 
The wet bulb read 87.9 Tuesday evening, meaning players could practice for two hours with helmets and shoulder pads on in shorts. I'm sure that wet bulb is going to be hot today. <coughs> hot this afternoon. Hot. Hot. <laughs> hot. That actually was on that Tommy Lee album. That was another song. Wet bulb? Yeah, wet, wet bulb. bulb. Hot wet bulb. That's what he called Tommy. wet bulb. What's that mean, Tommy? I don't know. It's just I, a don't know. Movie. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Granite City High School is going to uh, do remote learning for the rest of the week. I guess their AC is not working. Dang. Granite City High School students will attend classes remotely for the remainder of the week because of an excessive heat warning in the St. Louis region. Uh, I guess they, they return to in-person learning Monday. The district superintendent says the current HVAC system in the building is outdated and overburdened by hot temperatures in the area. Um, yeah, they're going to need to update that. Need to update that HVAC system. So all the kids are home in Granite City today, or at least the high school, <laughs> yeah. and they'll go back on uh, they'll go back on Monday. Well, this being, I know for my my kids, the first the first week of school. Did anybody here have a teacher or an administrator or even a student leave school and then come back a new person? Meaning. Hmm. Like, we had our gym teacher, who was also the baseball coach. Yeah. He left bald and came back with a full head of hair. Yes. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. I did have somebody <laughs> like this. Good sleep, I guess. My teacher, Mr. Nail. I'll, I'll never forget it. I think he was affiliated with the uh, coaching staff for Columbia High School's football team or something. Uh, but he was also, like, our government civics teacher. And he was a heavier set gentleman, like, the first couple years of high school. And then, like, I think it was... My junior year, I came back to school taking government. Dude had lost, like, two-thirds of his body weight. Like, he was a completely... He went from a kind of a beefier guy, normal, to, like, extremely thin. And um, I, we, he was teaching a class one day, and he just passed out, like, in the middle of class. And we were all freaking out. Like, 911 had to be called, I believe. And Whoa. You know, so I don't know if the guy was on a diet or had a health or was thing or, sick or was sick. I, and to be honest, I don't hear. I don't even know if he still teaches over there or whatever. But um, is he still with us? Is he still with us? I have no idea. So he, how how much lighter did he come back? Oh, dude, he came back like I'm not trying to be an, an a hole. Like 200 pounds lighter, like over a summer. So over yeah, what quick. nine weeks? Yeah. How long summer break? Twelve weeks. Yeah. Like three well, months, right? Months. Yeah, was he like chunky? Think he got lap band or something? Yeah, maybe bariatric surgery or something like yeah. that. Yeah, like there had to have been something going on. Yeah, you know, my uh, uncle did that. And to be honest, I preferred him heavier. I was like, this doesn't look right. Well, it's not about you. It's I know about it's not him. about me, but <laughs> I go. It's his self esteem. Like, he probably wanted to. I liked how he looked before. Lose some LBs I was like, you know, for health reasons on the football. Reasons. I don't know. He just I don't know. He could kick somebody's ass. I mean, he's a teacher. He doesn't need to do that. But I'm just saying. But he came back like gaunt. Yes. Ooh. Mm. I don't Hope remember. He's doing all right. I don't remember any teachers doing that. I remember students. I remember this this one gal. Um, she was, uh, I think she was a year younger, maybe my brother's age or something. But I mean, the whole school, no one knew this gal. She was an invisible gal, as I was, you know, an invisible guy, like just kind of like in the background, right in the shadows. And then summer break happened, and then first day of school. Who in the hell is that? I mean, it was like... Like a make. She got like a makeover? Like, like she came in, there was like light behind her. Like, yeah. I mean, she just looked so... And no one knew who it was. Everybody's like, wow, who is the new gal who's the most beautiful girl in the entire district? Then not like, amazing oh, when it happened? That's so-and-so who everyone knows who's been here for eight years. She took her glasses off. That's no, right. I, yeah, I, she I, took it, her glasses it was off, just like, dude, she straightened her hair. She just like, you know, it was it was that, you know, I mean, most of us look really kind of weird in, in, in middle school. Absolutely. Oh. And All like, she just, she happened to grow out of that uh. in July, but when no one was, you know, when, when nobody was in school. Well, and also, came back. Do you think her parents, because there was this girl in my middle school who was a nerdy girl, had, you know, her parents wouldn't let her shave her legs, any of that kind of stuff. Really? And then about a year later, I was at my buddy's house and we were swimming in his pool. And there's this girl a couple houses down in her pool who was like stunning. We're like, who's that? And he told us it was that girl. And I mean, it just like, you can't believe it. She finally shaved her legs. That you was it. She shaved well, her no, legs. no. She just, 
She was like uh, Sasquatch yeah. she before. Turned. She turned. Yeah, man. It's just, I, it, it was nothing. It was, I, I don't remember it being anything. I mean, of course, we were kids, so we, we couldn't tell. But I'm telling you, she looked so different. Everyone, no one knew who well, it was. Well, yeah, there's a point where the awkward phase ends and they start. People sure, thought it was a different person. Adults. A new just, kid. The well, next that, year, she didn't talk to you anymore, right? That middle school, Never you know, those three anymore. years. I, so last year, you know, my, my son graduated from middle school and I went to the graduation ceremony. And you walk in and every middle schooler is there. And you go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of large heads on small oh. bodies. <laughs> large heads. I don't mean to sound mean, but they walk, oh, yeah. That's so true. <laughs> Uh, I do feel bad though, because I just remember middle school. Such in the a middle of a transfer, it's like a werewolf in the middle of a transformation. Yeah, where you're just like, Ugh. oh gosh. It's almost creepier in the middle than when they go full wolf. You know. Yeah, at least with a werewolf, you know, it's a pretty quick transition. Yeah, but you do. You know, you do. You do see the middle of it. I'm telling you, man. For a, for a, for a kid, it's yeah. a it's a two long, years, it's a it's long two year process. middle. I, no, I audibly when when they marched the kids in, I went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people. A lot of people have a lot of different heroes. Heroes at the top of the chain for me are middle school teachers. Of course. People who decide, I want to be a teacher, and I want to go for middle school. Yeah. That is hero ground What are you, for nuts? Me. Right. <laughs> of all, yeah, of all the, the grades. Uh, yeah. I that, just, spectacularly well, I like, difficult time. I like a challenge. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, man, we Those need... middle school teachers better be paid double from what all the other teachers yes, are being paid. They're dealing double. With all sorts of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and they deserve it. You just made a lot of people really happy and really upset at the same time. It's, it's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. What are you saying? Double pay. Double pay, hazard pay, Make access to counseling. I did two tours at uh, Abe Lincoln Middle School. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I've seen some things. <laughs> I've seen things. I can't unsee them. <laughs> yeah, it's what, what what they used to call it uh, after World War One. It was uh, shell shock. Shell shock. Yeah. Why is he? Why is he in the corner shaking? Tween well, shock. He, he did. Uh, he did two tours at Rockwood Valley Middle. It's it's kind of weird, man. Like uh, the, I don't remember paying attention all that much to who was teaching what and all that kind of stuff. My kids, they started this week and they come back and they go, oh yeah yeah, so and so quit. This teacher quit. This this lady got fired. Like like mm -hmm. they're all like up in the business of of uh, of all the teachers. Like every, all the kids are talking about it. Like oh who <laughs> who who they basically uh, you know got rid of. You know who who quit because the kids are so gnarly. What you know what teacher is not here? Yeah, like you know which one of them. Well, what do you call it? Like if you if you if you get cut from a team or you can't you can't muster it in the army or something. What what, what do you call it? Like you get fall Discharge? out or something. You get discharged, yeah. No, no, Roll out. Like, like you didn't even, yeah, you didn't, washed Hold out. Over. Washed out. Washed out. Wa got washed out. out yeah, over, yeah. yeah. Talking about all the washouts. Who got washed out? Now, I'll never forget the, it was the baseball coach, bald, and he came back, full head of hair. I mean, clearly a toupee. <laughs> he was just sick of bicking it, A dude. toupee. Oh, it was a toupee. Not plugs. Oh, no, it was a toupee. And it was a terrible one. Well, mm. you know. There's never a right time though, because you're you're always gonna see, you're gonna at least have three waves that are gonna have seen you before. Yeah, you had There's to just a sketch do it. about that where it's like gradual two pays, where it's like just a little <laughs> bit of hair and then it's a little more, and it's yeah. like you just gradually change the toupee out like braces, so people think your hair's growing in on its own. You have yeah. to do it. You have to just go. Yeah, I think you just have to. You got to pick a you year. Gotta you got to pick a. You got to pick a summer and you got to ride you, it out you for got, three years. You got to Wayne Rooney it, and everybody goes, "Oh my gosh, look at Wayne Rooney's hair as a soccer player." Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody was like, "He didn't have that forever." And we talked about it for like two years, and then everybody forgot. Well, at least then, with LeBron. Then, yeah, then you get used oh, to him having hair, line. and then you, you, you forget that yep. he didn't. Well, at least with the baseball coach, eventually all the players that were there when you were bald will age out. It's true. Mm -hmm. And then, and then everybody will know you as the full, full hair-headed baseball coach. Gorgeous hair. Yes. Gorgeous. Look at the head of hair on him. Mm -mm. <laughs> Mm -mm. Worth it. <laughs> Worth it. Okay, so you talk about, uh, you know, teachers. And this is an email that's circulating online. Uh, it's, uh, my son graduated high school last June, and now he's dating his former teacher, and I'm pissed. Yeah. Whoa. I'm sorry, go back. What? My son graduated high school last June, and now he's dating his former teacher, and I'm pissed. Well, well 
Did he get good grades? How, like a, how well, old the teacher? Maybe he's like a new teacher. She's like 22. I right? know that I can't stop my son from dating since he's 18. I'm about to be 19 in September, but I'm sick to my stomach knowing he's dating his former teacher. He swears that nothing was going on while he was in school. Mm-hmm. He said they saw each other at a movie theater and started talking, and they hit it off. Yeah, what if they're like three years? Now they're dating. The yeah, movie yeah. theater they were secretly sneaking away to while she... <laughs> What's the age I mean, difference? While he was her. She's 24. Teacher's aide. 24. She's 24. 18. Six years. I think it's wrong yeah. for a teacher to date anybody that they taught in school. She is a second year high school teacher and is 24. And it's weird, but I it's mean. It's not the hmm. age that bothers me. It's the morals. I see. Is it so wrong, in my opinion, to date a student or former student? I don't know if I should say something to the principal or talk to her or demand my son not date her. Okay, so so go back to high school. Um, do you remember all your teachers? There's always a creepy teacher. <laughs> well, Let's just no, talk about I, it. I, Every I, school had a creepy teacher. Is, that is, you're like, what's up? This guy or this gal's... It freaks me. Here's what I think. I think most educators, before we the emails start pouring in, have good intentions. 99.9%. But there's that 0.1% that I'm like, you just wanted to be around kids. Like, you just stayed in this profession because, like, you either got frozen in a moment in time. Every school had that story of, like, a high school football coach or a baseball coach or a shop teacher or somebody that's like, hey, they're dating a student. Like, we had a junior high school teacher get busted. Yeah. Like, I, I I was in high school and the junior high teacher got busted. There are always rumors. I never, like found proof to any of the rumors that were flying around some of the towns. I st- uh, we had rumors that our fifth grade teacher would uh, would feel girls' backs to see if they had bras on. Ew. Yeah. Uh, well. There was always a touchy-feely guy. Yeah. I remember yeah. we had... I remember, remember the girls had softball that. shirts with their names on them, and we had a teacher who'd be a hallway monitor. This is in junior high, by the way. Eighth grade. That would just... Looking back on it, I'm like, that's a red flag, dog. Mm-hmm. Red flag on you, because he'd, like, grab their... You know, their shirts would be tucked in, and he'd be like, what's your shirt say? And, he'd and like, it stretch it out to where it'd be, like, tight on their boobs. Oh, You know man. what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, huh. it says Rachel, just like it, all the other softball girls' shirts. They, they're they wearing identical shirts. But I've seen you ask four or five girls the same question. Huh. You know. Looking, like, hearkening back, you're thinking, ooh, that's weird. Or yeah. at the time when it was happening, did you think it was weird? At the time, I was like, it's odd, but I was also just like... Since sixth grade. Yeah. You know, and you still have, like, in your mind, you look at teachers, you don't even think they're human beings. You right. think they're autonomous robots that come to school to make your life hell, and then they go in a closet and power down at yeah, night. Yeah, like they never mm-hmm. go to a bar. Right, exactly. <laughs> we had a senior senior cruise. I did not attend. But, uh, the, a lot of broken hips. The rumors the rumors on the senior cruise were uh, that a teacher uh, was involved, if, oh. you know, if you know what I'm saying. With Like, uh, went to the cruise? Oh, not only went to the cruise, participated in a threesome with two students. See, like, the, what ah, the hell, man? That, ah, was, that was the rumor. Proven I, or what? rumor? Uh, I mean. Because you know, like. What's proven? Somebody's going to somebody's gonna gonna make it up and say, it's going to become the game of telephone. Yeah, right, right. right, right. I'm going to say. The teacher was probably in the it. hallway with, with a girl with, and it became. Yeah, I'm going to say that I believed it. But, but back to this, back to this, 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 uh, this guy dating the teacher. Roles reversed, gal, 18, graduates, 24-year-old guy. Mm-hmm. We'd all look at it differently. I mean, you, you right. Can, right? I mean, it's it's hard not to look at, di- look okay, at it differently. Okay, so 18-year-old girl dating 24-year-old male right, teacher. Right, because, because there's a bit more of a, a of an, oppor- a, a, I mean, a lot more of an opportunity for a power thing right. or, or something. Like there, a right? grooming or something. It kind of goes into that realm <laughs> well, of I could like, go the other way, too. It could. Yeah. Yes, 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 I understand Equal that. opportunity. It's a, it's a good old-fashioned Double standard, but it is what it is. It, it is, is what it is. Yeah, I'm just discussing what what is. Um, oh yeah, you're so, right. So so with with that, I'm trying to think of all my teachers in high school. Of course, I have some like super memorable ones because they were good, and maybe I spent multiple classes with them over the course of four years or, w- or whatever it may be. But I'm going to say I probably had half of them that I don't even remember at all because there wasn't there wasn't a lot of impact. Yeah, yeah there wasn't a lot of. I don't even mean impact, but like the, there wasn't even like a lot of uh, of of um, you know, one-on-one time or, or influence or any of that kind of stuff. So even though she was his teacher, what are we talking about here? Are we talking about like a homeroom te- teacher where you show up and you do roll call and then you sit there silently? Right. 
Or are we talking about somebody that was like involved in like, you know, I want to be a math teacher. Teach me trigonometry. You know what I mean? Like maybe I don't know, maybe that doesn't make a she difference, but his, I swear it does. She was his authority figure at some point. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I guess thing. I guess that's the principal right there, and that's what the dad so, is objecting to. So the mom is like, "Do I tell the principal?" There has to be something. Yeah, in... Yeah, but he's but he's an adult he's now. An he's adult. out of school, right? I don't know, man. I there was a situation in the town I was in. Huh. I'm going to try to be vague, <laughs> but but also specific. <laughs> Guy was married to another teacher in the school. Baseball coach, had a very young, attractive TA. She graduated in May. They were seen coming out of a movie theater in June together by a parent. Parent told the superintendent. Superintendent basically pulled him in his office and goes, this can go two ways. You're going to resign immediately from the baseball team. You can finish out the year as a teacher. Then you're going to resign and move on, and I'll give you a good reference. Right. Or I fire you and we go public with all this Oof, mm. right now. Wow. And it blew up his marriage. Because I mean, Oof. imagine being her, the other teacher in the school, who's like, hey, what's going on with your husband? Why is he resigning from. So a she's a teacher too. Whoa. She was also a teacher. Oh, and it, I don't, whether anything nefarious was happening or not, oh. just the optics of it. Of course. You're coming out of a movie theater with a student. Yes. Yeah, so the optics of it basically blew up his Horrible. career. And he was, this was a. A pretty lucrative, a high school team that is very famous for and its what baseball a, program. What a made dumb, her what a dumb mistake. Yeah. So, I mean, it just yeah. depends on the district probably, but I would imagine if she does say something, there would be action taken. Listen, hmm. you don't go, that's probably not the first time this guy went somebody with, some, somewhere with that student. Come on. That was... Oh. Do teachers have to sign over like a um, like a pledge or some sort of like contract that's like you cannot have any relationships with? I mean, uh, I like, mean it's the law. It is the law, but I'm saying when students graduate, like, is there anything? I don't in know. Their they're contracts? consenting adults. It. I don't know. This seems weird. It, this just seems weird. I'm trying to put myself in this situation. Let's say my son graduates high school, and then he says, "Hey, I'm dating Mrs. So and So, or Miss So and So." I would first go. Let me see a picture of. Him. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> uh, it would be. So, I'm assuming. That's a good dad. <laughs> I'm trying to be honest here and think about it. Like, really put myself through the hypothetical, and and I think it would be slightly different. Now, if my daughter said, "Hey, I'm dating Mr. So and So, who is my teacher," I I think I'd lose my mind. What if it was a lunch lady? I think I, you know. I, I think <laughs> I, I think it'd be different. Their dad double standard. That's different. I mean, I, yeah, I, me too. I, yeah. <laughs> I think and you're in a position of right. power over them. Yeah. And maybe I wouldn't if feel you're that the lunch way. Lady. I, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. But yeah. <laughs> but the stories. What do we What do we always see? We always see some really attractive gal getting mm -hmm. in trouble. Doing things with middle schoolers or something. Remember, um, and maybe oh, it's yeah. because those news stories go so much further. It's the Dawson's Creek episode. No, do you remember? One. Do you remember? What? It was. Uh, what do you mean? Pacey and his hot ass teacher. <gasps> go rewatch yeah. it, people. The remember 90s the story of Ville, the Ville Falal? Uh, what did you, I, I've never ordered one it's of those. It's a good restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, Ville Falal. He was the one that was uh, like he was like twelve or thirteen. Knocked up his teacher. Oh, oh yeah. They got married. Yes, yes, yes. She wound up passing away. I think she passed away recently. Did they marry? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they that, like oh, went. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she and Mary Kay Letourneau. Mary Kay Letourneau. Okay, she, so she, she was like jailed, wasn't she? Oh, and, yeah. then, and after that, well, they got together anyway. She, they got married. Yeah. She, well, she. He was like twelve. Knocked her up. She was married, I believe. And then I think she went to jail. She was told they couldn't have contact anymore. They still were hooking up. Oh my god! Wow. And I believe they had another kid. That story is wild. That I is have wild. a theory. That's some that I'll posit to the group. Real damage. Yeah. On a twelve year old. Because boy. we all went to different high schools, right? Did you, maybe the cousin brothers went to the same one? Did you guys go to the same high school? No, he's from Springfield. Yeah. And okay, Shelby. so everybody went to a different high school. We all had a story like this, right? Like either from grades before there was always a teacher that was like suspect. Almost everyone I talked to, there's at least one where they're like, Yeah. I had heard rumors that the this guy and this student hooked up with a student or this lady hooked up with a former student. Mm -hmm. So I think it's somewhat prevalent. And I posit the theory. And I also have a friend, a guy I went to high school with who lost his whole career <clears throat> for dating a student. Stayed, stayed on, came back as a football coach at the same high school he played football at. Got caught dating like a 17-year-old student. You know, and he was... 
in his 20s or whatever. And yeah. it blew it. The guy's teaching. He's done. He works construction somewhere in, on the West Coast now. Hmm. I think that people get in a state of arrested development where they, like, they, they, they go to school, then they become a teacher, and they get to go back. A lot of, I feel like a lot of people go back to the high school they were in also. Yeah, they stay a kid. Oh, they stay in, in, in that, like, way. it's that Peter Pan syndrome of, like, oh, this is my second chance at high school, and now I am cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't cool in high school. Or, like, this is a point in my life I felt the coolest when I was a jock, and now I'm the assistant football coach. But they still behave as if... They were a student in some ways. I know what and you're it's saying. like they can't get that line of demarcation. Yeah, and you do see that a lot with with some some of the coaches, some of the, some of the guys, like the young guy Agreed. teachers that come in, like real aggressive about it, and you're yeah. like, whoa, you're just living like a long senior year here. Yeah. Um, which and I, I've never said this before. I've never said this. Never really thought about it until recently, until, until this conversation. Hey, did you guys ever have the inkling that a teacher had it for you? No. No. Because yes. I did. No. My senior year, there was a gal, younger teacher, and uh, I'm telling you, man, there were vibes. Nah, man, I put out, always put out the I'm unavailable vibe. To oh, the my teachers. gosh. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I, I think that's one of the things that, that kept this gal kind of on it for the year because I was not interested. I, I, I mean, what? I, I'm telling you, I, there, was, there was just enough vibe. There was just enough vibe, and this gal, like, I was invisible, I'm telling you, I, I was Excuse invisible. Excuse young man, I'd like to see her. There was, there was a couple people I graduated with at Baldwin Days, and they came up and they said, oh my gosh, you were Lindbergh, 99? I was too. I have no idea who you are. You're I was like, like, you can't I told see you. me through the hair. <laughs> yeah, and I was, I was like, I, t I told you, I, am, I was totally invisible. My senior year, especially invisible, why? Because my daughter was born well, the yes, second yes, week of school. Well, yes, you already had three kids. <laughs> no, my, my daughter was born the second week of senior year, so I was, like, unavailable. I, w I was not I – was, I was here just paying my yeah, dues, yeah, yeah. Pay, you know, spend, the spending the minutes. I was doing the time, and then I had, I had other things to do. So I remember this gal, senior year, teacher, probably second year teacher, maybe third year, and she would always talk me up. Uh, in the hallways, and like no one knew my name, and I didn't even have this teacher. She was like a home. Maybe she teacher. was not like n knowing your situation gave you a little extra attention because you needed it. That yeah. might you be. You look yeah. like a kid That's that needed it. Possible. Like you needed somebody, but, but no one knew. <laughs> or she no was one like, in that school knew that I had a kid. <laughs> oh, nobody knew. Okay, I was I'm sure say, the administrators knew. Well, they probably did when you sure. started having that mug that said "World's Best Dad." <laughs> started wearing those shirts <laughs> and stuff. I think your New Balances in fanny pack gave it away. This is my stuff, My baby. baby Bjorn. You're like in home ec, like where they teach you like, oh, this is it. We have to take the bag of sugar for a week and act like that's yeah. a baby. Like, no, I actually yeah. have a baby. Actual... I stood up and said, amateurs. Yeah, Moon went up to her desk. You went up to her desk and slapped it twice. You're like, that's solid. What is that, mahogany? And she's like, yeah, this guy's a dad. I, I love that we get yeah, to make maybe, fun of this. Maybe you're, yeah, maybe she just knew and you needed yeah. some, you know. I think your well, pleated khakis gave it away. It is interesting because she would talk to me a lot about like kid stuff she would ask me she would ask me questions not not like hey how's it going being a teenage dad she she'd say like hey um my, my husband and i are, are trying to get pregnant and if we do blah 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 and she would ask questions about it and i was always like what why are you talking to me you're this? potent right. it was it was oh, it was yeah. some of that juice I'm, I'm, I'm telling you man there was like some some vibes and it was interesting enough where i was like what I was very confused. What as was your to, grade as, in that as class? Of, no, no, no. See, this is the crazy thing. Is this was this was the seventh hour? This was the last class, and it was a, a study hall. What I don't I don't remember what we called it, but it was study hall, right? <laughs> and I had this move where they would say, uh, "Anybody want to go to the library today?" And they write a hall pass for the library people, and you, yeah, you, you go leave. You go out of the class, and you go left, and you go to the library to study there instead of in the classroom. Well, every day they'd take roll, and they'd say, "Anybody go to the library?" And I'm talking every single day of the entire school year. I stood up, went in the line, went up to the desk. She chat me up about something with the kids stuff or whatever. What kind she, of baby formula are you? Using yeah, dude, it was wild. And she she signed sign the pass, and then I walk out, and everybody turned left. I turned right. I got my car and went home every mm. single day. But maybe you just misread the situation. <laughs> Telling you, man, I've been hanging on to it for Dude, 25 I don't know. years. I just went into this. She just emailed. <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't. She She's said she is she lives, available. I don't think she lives in town. Dude, I anymore. just I'm reading about this Mary Kay Letourneau thing. Oh my! Like God. the timeline, wild. Give it to us. Wild. So it started in '96. <laughs> uh, so Villy Falau was Mary Kay Letourneau's student in um, in second and sixth grade. Oh my God. 
1996, she was 34, he was about to turn 13. Things got romantic. About to turn 13. Yeah. People Not on. a teenager. They were first caught together by police on June 18th, 1996. At the time, police found them in a parked car together. But the teacher claimed he was a family friend and uh, he said he was 18. Though they were brought to the ra to the police station, they were ultimately allowed to leave together after a call to his mom. Sometime later that year, mm -hmm. she got pregnant with his kid. Flash forward to 1997, March 1997, a relative of maybe uh, Mary Kay Letourneau's first husband, Steve, with whom she had four kids, turned her into the police. On May 29, 1997, she gave birth to their first kid, a daughter. Three months later, she pleaded guilty to two counts of second-degree child rape. On November 14, 1997, she was sentenced to seven and a half years behind bars. In 1998, she was released from prison after serving six months. In February of 98, she and Ville, who was 14 at the time, were caught together again. Man. And because she had violated her parole, which included a stipulation she stay away from him, her sentence was reinstated. She went back to prison. However... She was pregnant with their second kid, another girl. She gave birth behind bars in October of 98. I'm looking at a photo from 2015. He, the d two daughters are full grown now, and he looks like their older brother. <laughs> like, How about this? Just... How about this? The oh, husband, man. her husband, the Steve, the Mary Kay's husband. With Steve. the other kids? Steve, yeah, with the four kids with Mary Kay, yeah. didn't get divorced until two years later. What is going he on? He stayed. He stayed or? He stayed or, until 98. It actually says that or they just didn't officially get Maybe that's like, what it get is. Get me the hell Steve out of here. filed for divorce. Look at this. Filed. Look at this one. This is, he looks like her son. Like. Man. Wait, wait, wait. And this is a happy family now? Th this is, yes. Well, she's, she's passed. Quote, she's unquote. passed. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so in 2002, when Billy Falau was 18, he and his mom filed a civil lawsuit against the school district where Mary Kay had worked in Des Moines, Washington, saying they failed to protect him from Mary Kay, the teacher, yeah. with whom now he considers his abuser. Wow. They were asking for over a million dollars for lost income, medical costs, and pain and suffering. I mean... Now the court was like, no, no. Uh, but could you imagine roles, gender roles reversed? I mean, predator. Okay, so in 2002, Billy Flau and his mom sued the school district saying they did not protect him from Mary Kay. <laughs> Flash forward to 2004, Mary Kay is released from prison. She and Billy back together. Wild man. Dude, Though a no contact us? order was still in place and Letourneau had uh, registered as a sex offender, the then 21-year-old father had requested it be removed in the summer of 04. How did she pass? Uh, and, and what is his take now in 2023? Uh, 05, they died got married. Age. You say what? She died of old age. <laughs> in 05, they got married uh, about a week before their oldest kid's eighth birthday. Uh, in 09, uh, oh, in 09, the couple stayed together and even hosted several, quote, hot for teacher parties together. Oh. No. Flau worked the events as DJ Headline. Cool and the name. bar sold signed posters and T-shirts featuring images of the couple. Good God. Dude, how does, I mean. She died of cancer at the age of 58. Oh, bummer. In 2017, they were uh, uh, interviewed by Barbara Walters. In June of that year, he filed for separation. What does a therapist, where, where, is, where does a therapist start with this, with this guy? Mm. You know, like talk to him, like, okay, listen. Oh, she died in 2020 of uh you're going to fight this for Answer. a long, like, just, do they just come out the, the first meeting and say, like, you're going to fight this for a long time, but brother, you were, like, abused. You were, you were prey for a predator, mm -hmm. and we have years of unpacking to do to help you readmit that. I mean, can you, I mean, I don't even know what the, what the, what the mm. condition is called or the syndrome is called, but, like, this right. is, like, full-blown, like, right? I mean, can you imagine having an adult... Not even just like I'm, because you know I had my my share or whatever when I was when I was a kid. But like, um, you imagine an adult like not a, not only being interested in something horribly sexual, but like relationship wise, like full on like forming this 
we're to, we're going to be together and have children, and now you're a dad at 12. And I mean, good. Yeah, it was 13. Good yeah. God. You're okay. robbed yeah. of your innocence. What does that child? do? Yeah. yeah, what does that do to a mom? I'm mind? so glad my, I didn't even know that that thing was going to do anything like that at that age, you know? Yeah. Mm. All right, so. Oh, yeah, 12? Yeah, I had, man, baseball and basketball was the coolest <laughs> thing on the planet yeah. at that yeah, point. That, that's very young. I yeah. think the high school thing is probably more prevalent than... I don't that. know. As a dad, would you be okay with it if your daughter... If your daughter I mean, pr- wound no. up dating the teacher? No, I don't think they're so. Both, they're both adults. She's out of school. I mean, year. I wouldn't love it. I don't think anybody would love it. Would you it. tell the principal? Because uh, um, I know uh, Elizabeth yeah. on the instant feedback said it's disgusting and she would tell the principal immediately. Yeah, I, w- I mean, at that point, like, I mean, I- I'm not a parent, but like, I would imagine I'm still like highly, my personality, I would be highly protective of my child probably until they were like 45. Yeah. So I'm like, it's yeah, gross. I would, I would have been. Honestly, I'm, I mean, and all joking aside, it's weird. It's. I would have gotten up in that teacher's face, to be honest. That's where I'm at. I know. I know. Like, what are you, get away from my child. I know everybody's an adult. It looks weird. Optics are, are weird. There's more people. Go find somebody else. Literally, there's billions of people in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, you're attracted to somebody. Guess what? There's probably a million other people that look exactly love like that Love is person. love. What if he's the one? Love is love. I think you got to look at the time you're in, too, and especially now and the times we're in now. You know, things that may not have been as apropos in the 70s or 60s. Right. Don't really fly today, and it's like I do think that uh, in the con- converse of the guy that's stuck in the Arrested Development high school football jock, I think that maybe uh, from the female perspective, I could see it being like I wasn't popular in high school. I didn't have access to these boys giving me attention, and now I'm my early twenties, but I'm still kind of effed up in the head from my high school experience, and I'm still in high school, and now I'm getting attention from the guy, the jock. Mm. Or the cool, popular kid. Yeah. Or the goth kid that I pined after in high school. And you start, like, projecting all these weird things. There's all kinds of weird stuff. All right, let's talk back to high school real quick. Let's just think of the, not the sleeping with your teacher memories, but... Uh... <laughs> Hold on. Can I say this? <laughs> yes. Somebody emailed in that their former Spanish teacher got busted because he was a pimp. <laughs> I was like, hell yeah, yeah. dude. What? Said he had two what? phones in class, and they walked him out of the school because he was, like, taking the pimp Spanish calls. Is- dude, Mr. Class. Gonzalez is a pimp. <laughs> yeah, dude, wow. that's like, no, really, he's a pimp. Oh, yeah. No, he's, he's actually pimp. like, pimping out the women. The purple fur coat didn't give it yeah. away? And a cane. <laughs> purple it's fur gold. coat and a cane. Yeah. Sweet. Oh, man. I just, I was picturing the guy in my head. This man's teaching geometry in a top Como to Yamas, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Adios, bitches. <laughs> Kids. Adios, keep your pimp hand strong, baby. <laughs> like, uh, I think the clues were there. <laughs> you were a everybody, every day. Everybody right? was shocked. <laughs> Let me tell you how to count that money. Uno, a dose. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch better have all my pesos. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, stop that. <laughs> um, okay, so so think think back to high school. Um, these are things we don't miss about high school. Oh yes, <laughs> don't miss. About, sometimes you know we look back on our high school days with those rose colored glasses. Everything was good, right, Moon? Right. Everything was great. It was lovely. He is the, here are the things we don't miss about it. Bring Number one, on. needing permission to use the bathroom. Oh my god, the worst when you got IBS. Are if you your teacher me? wouldn't give you a hall pass, you couldn't go. I never understood. Oh, you this. could go. It mm. just wasn't going to be lovely. Every time, oh, and, and like I had like stomach issues in high school, and uh, yeah, oh, <laughs> I thought you were gonna the piano. Woo. And so like my mom had to like talk to the do- the school nurse and be like, "Hey, Lauren has to go. Like, just if she runs out of the room, like just let her do it." You know, but it was so embarrassing. And you so needed a permanent poop pass. I needed a permanent poop pass. And they would not give it, man. There were certain teachers, math teachers, were like, "You're gonna sit here and learn this algebra." And I, I don't care. I IBS go. be damned. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it was bad. Anyway, back to you. I remember first grade, I had a, or a dental appointment that morning, so my mom dropped me off, and the kids were out at recess, but I had been walked to the room. There was no teacher in there, and I had to pee so bad, but I was afraid to go in the hallway because they, you know, you had to ask for permission, but yeah. no one was in there. Me too. And I peed my pants, and yeah. it was one of the most embarrassing oh, things no. of all time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, no, 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 I'm talking about right now. I just peed my pants. Oh. But also then. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh man, that's idiot! I love you, Scott. <laughs> a loser. That's awful. Beat his pants. Yeah, I had same thing, same grade. I was like, I don't remember if I was sick. 
there's like three of us that had to stay in for recess. And the hall monitor, Sharon, was like the lady you had to ask to go to the bathroom. And you're in first grade, you still like, you're totally indoctrinated where you're just like, I can't leave this room. Yeah, if Sharon doesn't, trouble. If Sharon doesn't approve this. Yeah. And I just like remember getting in like the box with all the blocks and covering myself up with blocks and just letting it ride. Oh. Just pee in my pants. <laughs> oh, man. And then I told, the kids came in and were like, what's, what's wrong with your pants? And I'm like, oh, these are stonewashed. <laughs> <laughs> Which for a first grader, yeah, I thought was pretty clever. Yeah, clever, yeah. absolutely. Very clever. I think I got away with it. Uh, other things, than I smelled like straight urine. Oh, uh, things we don't miss about high school, bullies and mean clicks. Mm -mm. I, I had a bully one year. Did you? Yeah. What did he bully you with? I'm assuming it was a he. Was it a girl? Was yeah, it a girl? No, it wasn't a bush. <laughs> was it a girl? Jason Swartz. Oh, what a name. Made seventh grade. <laughs> Just so miserable. What did he make fun of you for? Oh, he would he would beat me up. He would uh, like pull my pants down in gym class. Oh, buddy! I had a seventh grade bully named Jason. I think there was there was a lot of Jasons out there just just rough, roughing roughing folks up. Gross face. Mm. This guy had a little man syndrome, and he just was trying to fight everybody. Damn. This Especially was in ju in junior high, him. you know, when when they start combining all the elementary schools, and you know, they put me in a gym class with nobody I knew. Yeah. With kids from the other side of town. And they were this one kid who was so mean to me. Made going to gym something I enjoyed. Yeah. Miserable. Sorry. I will never forgive you, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> What's Honor. Jason doing now? I have no idea. I'll never forgive you, Senator Schwartz. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a gym teacher, <laughs> man. He's in all those Wes Anderson movies. He's probably a gym, a gym teacher. I had a bully that, and he knows this. If I ever see him out, it's on sight, bro. We're in our 40s, and it's still on. What? <laughs> so, Clayton Wyatt, if you're listening, Clayton. don't cross Watch me. Watch your back. Don't it's on sight, Dog. Clayton. This is a blood feud that will never be over. He was just like a sociopath. How, how old were you? I was young, but, man, he was brutal. Brutal. I mean, this kid was a sociopath. I'd be surprised if he's not in prison. Like, he was a sociopath. He stabbed me with a sharpened stick. What? Like, it got real. Uh, this kid, Jason Swartz, he just, uh, rich kid from the rich side of, of town. Course. Nice. Uh, silver spoon. Silver spooned, nasty face, always wore nice clothes. <laughs> Sucks. Yeah. It sounds kind of cool. Probably though. a lawyer. Again, the only bullying I got was... Uh, Never forgive. My now friend Neil and his girlfriend at the time, Allison, uh, used to sing Mbop to me because I looked like the Hanson Brothers. And that was the extent of my bullying in eighth grade. So you had it easy. Uh, <laughs> things we don't miss about high school. Uh, group projects where everyone got the same grade, even if you did most of the work. Anybody uh, ride through on those uh, projects? Oh, as a rider? As, or as, as the, the rider, not the driver. <sighs> oh, well, I mean... I'll be honest with you. I, I got hooked up with... Uh, with some with some smart kids and yeah, hey, pfft, God. To this yeah. day, I owe my uh, probably my diploma to to one gal, and she knows it. I've actually uh, talked to her sister recently. She's helped me out with uh, a lot of stuff with my brother. Uh, but uh, yeah, I didn't. Uh, again, you know, had a kid senior year, had this one math class, had to get through, and I was like, my my brain was just not here for trigonometry. Mm. <laughs> but uh, man, thank God Jennifer was there. She was in front of me, and she would just go like this, and she kind of lean to the left. Scooter paper over to the right, mm. and I was like, "And that's the all the homework." And yep. blah blah blah. Thank right. you. Put thank my you. <laughs> every day, and I feel terrible for it, but thank you, hey, thank everybody. You. Yep. Had a little God bit. Of bless. That. Thank about, you. How about feeling judged for everything you wore? Every single every thing you single wore. thing. I couldn't win. God dang, I could not well, I, win. I went through this with my son the other day. I'm like, dude. I'm like, you look like a slob throwing a pair of jeans. He goes, jeans. <laughs> <laughs> He goes, if I got caught wearing jeans, I go, really? that's a thing? Wow. Like, yeah, yeah. like Kids aren't allowed to wear their jeans? Like, no, they, they're, they're, they're just not like, cool, they're just like basketball players at warm-up. I guess jeans are not cool. Dang. I go, look, your dad wears jeans all the time, and he's cool as hell. <laughs> 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 Oops. <laughs> that's not what you want to hear. I never felt, I felt like uh, I was at the right time at Columbia High School where... <laughs> Everybody was just wearing weird stuff. Like, I mean, a lot of my stuff came from thrift stores, and I liked it that way. And it, it, people were just wearing crazy stuff. So nobody was really judging, and I could have that completely wrong. But my perspective was, I was like, I was dressing like Chino Marino and Gwen Stefani in one. <laughs> like, and that's who I was 
for three years of high school. I feel like when we were in high school, uh, and, and Rafe graduated the same year as me, you a couple years after us, you and uh, you, all you guys, um, it was a very weird fashion like very weird fashion going on in the in the early to mid nineties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you had your grunge, mm -hmm. and you also had your like preppy. You had your preppy, and you had your like huge jeans, the like Jenkos. the Jenkos. There was there was multiple facets facets of alternative. There right. was there was a wide swath of different kind of mm -hmm. fashion clicks you could go into. They had the like pants wanted, with tons of zippers on. Did them? you want to be Eddie Vedder or did you want to be MC Hammer? Did you want to be? Yeah, yeah, it was weird. It was uh, a, Chris it was, Cornell, or did you want to be uh, Vanilla Ice? But there was even mm. like a like a like a black hole of uh, preppiness as well. Like for for the gals, like there was like multiple levels of preppy, and they could never get it right either. You know, there was always yeah. like these weird bickerings about whatever preppy fashions were going on. I was like full alternative. I, I still remember this like it was, like it was yesterday. I was listening to nothing but, you know, like early, early POD and Rage Against Machine and all this. And John and I would go home every single day. We played soccer until the sun go down. And we played rage, uh, you know, rage music until his mom would, would kick me out. And like that was our that was our life. And I came to school in a Rage Against Machine shirt. This is before Evil Empire came out. And uh, I was sitting in geometry class. And I remember this other kid came in with a rage shirt. And he saw me wearing one and was so pissed. He, mm. he took it off. And made like a spectacle about it, and I was like, "Oh God, I can't, I can't even wear this. Oh, I can't even wear my favorite band trendy. shirt. Like I'm you're so trendy. sick of this." He wasn't. I was, I was so upset. I was like, "I can't fit in anywhere. Everybody's angry with me about what I'm wearing. Just leave me alone." Mm. <laughs> That's incredible. I'll never forget that. Thanks a lot, Dustin. That there stuck was with a, me. Damn it, Dustin. Remember the bib overall? Oh yeah. It was yeah. a short little window in the '90s where like. Dudes were wearing bibs, like fresh prints. Oh, right, yeah. The, the but one thing undone, and they're like bare yeah. nip hanging yeah, yeah. out. Like sometimes no shirt underneath. No, we had a couple well, it was sweet. not me. We had a couple kids. Yeah, I was going to say, we had a couple was kids. Not, from, I don't think that was by us. We had a couple kids from Hillsborough that came in, and they all had that. That wasn't a, that was a Midwest thing? It was. That was oh, not right. an East Coast thing? I don't, I don't remember that. There I was had like overalls a, with, one, with one with one thing over the shoulder? I remember girls wearing that. No. I yeah. didn't well, they would do like the purple ones. Yeah, like during the crisscross era, dude, there'd be like dudes with like bib overalls that would be shorts yep and then a and then bull's leave, hat and like a bull's flat bill hat with like a metal piece on it uh, like ice cube mm -hmm. and then usually like either a bull like a jersey tucked in and then they'd let the whole front of the bib overalls hang down in front of them like a waiter's apron that's coming okay. back too. I, yeah yeah it is vaguely i vaguely remember that my wife has like four pairs of overalls she's like i, I would get live, i would live in these i'm glad these are back i own overalls now and i love them but you're a farmer but i wear them you know when I have to do outside work. Yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, when friends were suddenly mean to you for no apparent reason. My entire friend group yep. egged my house. It was over. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. Uh, it was over. I tracked them down because uh, it snowed that day. They, they teepeed and egg, they egged my car, teepeed our house. But it snowed like really lightly and there were like footprints. And I was like, oh, look at that. Okay, so Adidas, that's a, that's a gazelle. All right, we got a boot over here, blah, blah, blah. I went back to school and they acted like nothing was wrong. And I go, hey, Billy. Let me see your shoes, brother. Mm. And he went, foop, and I go, I think we're done here. Oh. Like seven years of friendship. I was like, dude. Bummer. Because your man. shoes? Because he, he TP'd my house oh, and, okay. and egged my car oh, and lied okay. about it. How and come you like, didn't call me when we were kids and tell me you're a dweeb? That could have ruined my reputation. Like if people dweeb. found out I was Point talking Scott. to you. Golly. I just remember what the preppy kids were wearing. <laughs> Benetton. Benetton. What is that? I don't know what that is. Yes. Do you remember Benetton? I, Benetton. Me, yes. What is Benetton was a brand. Benetton. B -E the United Colors of Benetton. Yeah. Oh, that's what that was. What the heck? I don't remember. But now, this was a rich brand, right? Like, yes. This was, yeah. It wasn't yeah. a Walmart? Preppy. Yeah, this, see, I wasn't anywhere Steve near this. Steve from Blue's Clues used to wear a Benetton shirt. Like, the, the stripy. The go, go like Benetton, it's, 1990s. It's like, it's like Banana Republic, Bugle Boy, and... And uh, what was... What was uh, no, whoa, 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 yeah. Shoot, what was that one brand? Uh, es Esprit... Yes. Oh, Esprit yeah. or something like Spirit? Yeah, E-Spirit. Yeah. E -E -spirit. yeah. <laughs> if you wanted to wear ugly clothes, this is a good thing. Well, you lived through the, the peak Tommy Hilfiger era, oh, too. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's right. Everybody and that that's right. And K-Swiss. That's how you knew uh, he was rich. If you had all Tommy Hilfiger. Remember when Aaliyah wore the uh, tube top, the Tommy Hilfiger tube top with the Tommy Hilfiger big old jeans and she had the boxers underneath? 
every girl in West Frankfort, Illinois, aspired mm. to be Aaliyah in that moment for mm. that billboard ad, and we could not pull it off. Yeah, that, <laughs> at all. That gray Tommy sweatshirt that was so South County. Oh, like yeah. every other guy had that. Then remember bum bum sweatshirts. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. bum equipment. Bum equipment. L.A. Gear. L.A. Gear's rad. Remember those? That might have been a little. Yeah, L.A. LA looks LA too. The gel for mm. your hair. Oh yeah, that's right. The pink stuff. Delia's catalog. <laughs> there was no better catalog to get in the mail as a chick in the '90s than the Delia's catalog. Oh, we, had a, we had a kid in, in sixth grade, Rodney, and he wore a bum sweatshirt. Rodney, dude. dude, it was, it was <laughs> honestly see him in my mind, <laughs> and it and it said bum on it. And I go, Rodney's a bum. Look at Rodney. It was. It <laughs> You're was, a bully. No, was, I wasn't a bully. I just. Jumped in when oh. somebody else. Uh, <laughs> it was all that crap with but it huge, was ribbing. with huge ribbing. logos. Bum, Fubu, Tommy. Um, huge. The Tommy Hilfiger yeah. flag, like the just, flag, is a, a just gaudy. Mm. Yeah, everyone was yeah. wearing just gaudy crap with giant. Did logos. you guys ever wear George? I remember the Adidas. Jo like Giorgio Armani? No, there's no, Walmart's brand Walmart. is George. George. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, and then the uh, Massimo. Like Giorgio Armani. That's no. what I got. You remember Massimo? Massimo was like the, the, the cheap one. Massimo's at Target Massimo, yeah, they sell at Target I now. was in Massimo and Utility Jeans. Remember Utility? Oh. That, those are the ones. Oh, that, those are not. Those oh. are the ones that I wore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like long shorts that weren't too baggy. Yeah. I wasn't quite Jinko. This, they were, this, they were cheap. They were like, this takes mind? me back. Look at Aaliyah. All oh, and the Tommy Hilfiger. Yeah. 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 Sweet. That was, that was so that was, cool. Still looks rad. That was a time. Everybody wanted it. That trickles down to the poor folk, and it's not cool anymore. Yeah, that's completely mm -hmm. back. That's all that stuff. I mean, well, champion, once it goes to once it goes to Target. Yeah, I was thinking like TJ Maxx. Yeah. yeah. Once Tommy got into TJ Maxx, and poor folks could afford some. Uh, Tommy Hilfiger stuff that was yes. slightly printed or regular. Yeah. <laughs> Would you have a Z Cavaricis? Yes. I didn't have any of that you, stuff. Oh, I got oh hand me downs. Gosh. Stone washed cutoffs. Z Cavaricis also had this amazing halter top. There used to be a place in a little boutique shop called Harris's. My grandma used to take me there, and they had the Z Cavarici aisle. And I mean, it was so expensive and so cool, and all the hot girls wore them. No, the rich kids mm. had the Z Cavaricis in, in fifth and sixth grade. I never was. Yep. They were like the big, big baggy pants. Yeah, but they, they also had, like, had regular tight tops and bottoms. They were like a tight roll without having a tight roll. Y'all tight rolled? In uh, heck yeah, no. I did, I did what year was I? Remember sure. sure. the guy that tight rolled too long? I did. Our buddy, you did? I was I was probably four months behind. Yeah. Everything always. No, I'm talking years. There was uh, one yeah. guy that was still tight rolling like oh, man. well into the odds. Am I gonna buy these vintage Z Cavaricis Look 80s at, wrap front cuffed? Yeah, 80s. I mean, they're kind of hot. Look, Look at, at those. At these. The 1980s vintage Z Cavaricis. Those were the ones that the kids wore to school. Look at this. Those are kind of These are forty five dollars. This on looks very East right Coast now. Italian family. Oh I yeah. Like, the Chris Monaco always wears <laughs> Z Cavaricis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, look at that. This is what it looks like in real life. That's not as hot. No. MC Hammer Pants. Yeah, that looks it looks like the jeans really tried something and gave up. Yeah, all the Italians. It was Chris Chris Monaco, Chris Azzoni, all had Z Cavaricis. I had 15 Chris's in my class, by the way. Oh, we yeah, should yeah. wear what we... <laughs> Chris, Michael, and Kevin. We should, I had 15 Christophers. Let's replicate an outfit that we have like a photo of from the 90s and wear it one day. I burned all my First photos. of all, I still what? have some of my stuff, and I started wearing it for, for Teenage Dirtbags, and it was absurd looking when we started the band. Now, I look like the goddamn crowd. Oh, yeah. So Everything, cool. Yeah, everything's Everything kind of coming back. around again. Everything is back. The sizes, the bagginess. Like my kids are dressing like we did, and it's um, cool they don't even, they don't even realize that they're just jacking our style. All right, I want to do one one more before one more thing we don't miss about high school before we hit the break is not being welcomed to certain lunch tables. Oh, that was the best. Mm -hmm. um, you found your you, listen. You found your group. Obviously, you know the first week of school, and God forbid you were ostracized from whatever table you're at, and you're like a free agent. Yeah, yeah. Looking for a different lunch table. Oof. Forever a free agent. We we had our four. We had like four guys. We we found each other uh, freshman year, and we ate at the exact same chair every single year, or every single day for four years. So oh, I'm telling, like, when my kids come home from school, the first thing I ask them is not how your day was. Who just went to lunch? Yeah. Are you cool? Yes. You all right. You that's fine. Find a lunch table. You guys all right? Do you guys tell your kids like before they go to school, like, hey, 
like, do you have like a conversation with them about like the outcasts in quotes, like befriend somebody that might be alone? Like, do because I see a lot of memes that parents share as like the the school year is starting. Like, hey, tell your kids to like reach out to somebody who maybe doesn't have somebody to sit with at lunch or the new kid. Like, does literally any parent ever do that? Nah, my kid is not a dork. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, no. Well, uh, what they, they have at school? They had a uh, oh, they call it some kind of bench, like a. Uh, the friendship bench. If he can't find anybody to play with, he'd sit on the bench. Oh, that's, that's not good. And then somebody's supposed to come over and, you know, cool. play with you. So we, can, so we can put a spotlight on it? Like, I don't know. If you're in elementary school. <laughs> Those yeah, kids, elementary school, sure. But in high school, no. no, no it's, They're I, the punchable crowd. I asked the kids about, you know, hey, where'd you sit at lunch? Because yeah. there's nothing in my mind more sad than watching a kid with his lunch, with his lunch tray. Yeah, go in the bathroom and eat it. Yeah. Right? He's no, alone. I'm just I'm talking walk around just looking oh. for a place to, Try to find a place. Just find trying to find a place to sit. Let's we could make a Riz show friend bench for lunch. I'm not getting involved in that. Oh yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you imagine like everybody's got their friends sitting at the table? Bench. Wow. Yeah, I remember. It's like a bully cue. <laughs> <laughs> Next. It bums yeah, that's me what I mean, out. Just put a spotlight on it. You no, know, it bums me out to see the kid with the lunch tray yeah, just looking for a play. He's got yeah. the red lunch tray and he's got his little carton of milk. It would make the world so much better. These people are just, everybody's going through the same hard time. These little kids, just maybe they're new at school. Befriend them. You know, everybody's weird. Everybody's got their weird quirks. We're all lunatics. Befriend them. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah. we can have those talks. I don't know about you, Riz, but like, it's the, the kids don't want to talk about school all that much. They really don't. But they, you're the they, parent. Talk to them and be like, Yeah, you can talk to them until you're blue in the face, but they just kind of like, they kind of shut you, they kind of box you in. We read this study. They box you out a little bit. I'm going to talk was, to This was kids. years ago. <laughs> uh, if you want to engage with your kids about school, about their day, money. No, pay them off? No. Oh. There's one question you ask them, and they will open up about their day. Not like how how you know how was math class? Mm -hmm. Would you learn today? They don't want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. If you ask your kid, would you learn today? They'll go nothing. Right. Or how was your day? It was fine. Fine. Here's the one question you ask them to get to get them going about school: is, hey, who got in trouble today? Interesting. Who got in trouble today? And that awesome. opens up the door. Now your foot's in the door. And now you know too if your school. kid is well behaved or not. Because if you ask them a question or you look at you instantly, like what? Who got in trouble Who today at you? school? Yeah, we ask like uh, at, at dinner. We'll do like random specific questions, like, "Hey, um, oh shoot, of course I can't think of any right now." But like, uh, like, did you? Uh, um, who's who's the last person that you met that you hadn't met before? And then everybody has to like think about it. Mm. Oh, uh, you know what? I met some kid uh, on Monday named Chris or or whatever it was. Or uh, hey, tell me something that you saw today that was blue. Just so it actually kind of takes them through their day and, and breaks open that, how was your day? Oh, no. When you ask the who got in trouble question, oh, that both kids light up. And they go, oh, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thatcher today. Woo. Through a chair. <laughs> well, Thatcher's been <laughs> wild ever since that guy on the Riz show has been. Thatcher, man. He got suspended again. I can't believe it. <laughs> 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 who got in trouble today? Dude, Thatcher came back from suspension. Dude, you would never. Punch the teacher. Wow. That a boy. No. And no. now, they, well, the kids are on to it now. They go, why are you ask us the same damn question every right. time? <laughs> <laughs> you just think our school is Same a, damn, qu like same crazy damn question. Same damn question. We're on, we're, we're on to you, Dad. We're but Thatcher did get in trouble again. All right, let's, uh, let's move on. All right, today's Team Riz. Remember, the day is brought to you by Hotshot Sports Bar and Grill. Proud sponsor, Team Riz. Visit hotshotsnet.com slash Team Riz. From St. Louis, Nathan. Hey. 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 It's our Team Riz member today. Nathan has been a Riz show listener since the very beginning and is a podcast weirdo who always listens to the show. Currently lives overseas in Germany and has loved being able to bring a piece of home with him by downloading the show every morning. I'm assuming uh, military. Thank you for your service, Nathan. I'm assuming... Because nobody goes to Germany just to live, right? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes that. people work. American companies over That's in Germany. That. Germany? Germany's uh -huh. awesome, dude. They got hot dogs. And I'd, love to, I'd love to go to Germany. Uh, Nathan's favorite segment, Match Up with Moon. Loves whenever I get fired up about topics discussed on the show. Well, thank you, Nathan. Nathan, hey, from St. Louis, currently out of Germany, is our Teamers member of the day. Get super sweet Teamers member of the day soccer jersey. Get yourself signed up, 1057thepoint.com slash Teamers. 
All right, we'll take our first break of the morning. We'll come back with Crap on Celebrities. It is 712. Wednesday, traveling and weather, moon coming at you. Traffic brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. There's still a lot of racing left in 2023 at WWT Raceway. IndyCar returns August 26th and 27th. That's this weekend. That's right. Get your tickets now. We have delays 55 northbound between Germania and Gasconade. Average speed down to 25 miles an hour. Your point forecast, morning fog, then partly cloudy. Heat, a peak heat index from 110 to 115 This degrees. is a long fast alert. They're saying the record is 102 for the day. They're supposed to, what, hit 100? High of 101 today. Psh, the record is 102. Low of 81. Right now it is, oh, well, I guess low of 80 since it's 80 at the Point Studio. Your Point Forecast is brought to you by CarX Tire and Auto. All right, Lauren, what do you got for us? So the entire family was in town with Beyonce on Monday. Where did Jay-Z stop by? I'll tell you that. Jelly Roll is losing weight. Angelina's new middle finger tattoos. And we try to get through this list of the best soundtracks of all time. Emphasis on try. Okay. We got that. We got your crappy birthdays. We got the porno birthday. And uh, all the arguments next. You crap on celebrity. Stay there. The program right. phone number 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. The Mick Ultra Studio Cams, 1057thepoint.com slash Riz. The socials at R-I-Z-Z Show. Your emails, Riz Show at 1057thepoint.com. Send us your instant feedback through the 1057 The Point mobile app. Crab on Celebrities here in just a moment. Uh, we'll give away some fabulous prizes, including tickets to go see Offspring, uh, Disturbed, Guar, Shine down to Papa Roach. We'll play Password later. We love that game. <laughs> Is this the game where I get very frustrated? Yes. Well, then you have to be more specific. <laughs> <laughs> Last time we played, or I played with everybody, uh, you got really upset. Not at you. At the listeners. At the listeners, listeners yeah. Because yeah. they're listeners. And they're they supposed to be listening. They should. They were not listening. You got to listen. You have to listen. That's me clapping for emphasis. <laughs> you have to listen for the clues. Anyway, that's fine. Went for a uh, went for a physical <laughs> exam yesterday, first time in in quite a while. Good for you. And yeah, you know, um, uh, this is the uh, the year emphasizing health. Good. Get myself in shape. Good to nice, hear. man. Please preach that. Preach. Yeah, yeah, no, I want, I want a new doctor. Please Shout take care of Shout out to uh, Dr. Oliver over at uh, Mercy. <laughs> new doctor, who this? <laughs> Fully expecting to come in to talk about having a finger up my took, uh, up my tuchus. Yeah. yeah. Did you? No. Oh, bummer. Oh, bummer. Sorry. Yeah, next time. Thumb? Did you ask? Did you? Hey. You, 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 drop tra you gotta go in there and be bold. <laughs> you gotta drop trout instantly. It. That does, you know, as a woman, like, we get pap smears, like, starting whenever, like, I started whenever I was 16 getting pap smears. Most women probably wait till they're out of high school, maybe. I don't know. But the idea that men ha don't get to get um, that, get probed, essentially, uh, until you're 45. Just, just one of the cool things about I being guess. a guy, am I right, guys? I, 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 love, I love how the wording she chose was... Don't get to get. Don't get like, to get pro. Yeah. Like, we, like, we don't get to. Like, I, <laughs> like I it's love, fun. I love having, ladies, make sure you are getting your annual pap smears. It is so, so important. And, and get the, you know, I start again, I started pretty young, but um, <laughs> it's important. And so, but men don't get that. And so it's a very, vul that is the most vulnerable state a woman is in. Wow. Well, yeah, I, I was, I was expecting to come in and, and give the, uh, maybe not on a first date, uh, with the new doctor. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not a first date thing. Were you nervous when you were in there? Like you thought it was going to be coming? Like it was awkward maybe? I, well, I wasn't. I, I, didn't, I wasn't knowing what to expect. Okay. Is this a tall fella? Was, yeah, yeah, I was going to say he's staring at his fingers. Yeah, like, look at his he, hands uh, first. Tiny yeah. little fingers. And you don't want a sausage fingered physician. No, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, no, I got it. They schedule colonoscopy. I yeah. we'll get it. Now I'm 45. I got this guy's all thumbs. Except some, some guy comes in with, <laughs> with Shrek's hands. He just goes, yeah. I'll see you later. Hey, now. <laughs> Why is your last name Rawlings? <laughs> nice meeting you. Goodbye. Why is your last name Rawlings? No, I got to get a colonoscopy. Um, got to do some blood work, so. Yeah, it was fine. Though. And you didn't do the blood work yesterday because you down. No, be, and they have a Quest lab right on the on the ground floor yeah. over there. So mm -hmm. I was is expecting. I, I had fasted. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. For eight to ten hours, expecting maybe to just go downstairs and get the lab work done. But thanks to Vivolas for bringing sandwiches over. <laughs> there went that. <laughs> there went that. And some meatballs so in your bloodstream. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, they took my blood. They go, uh, sir, you are a quarter meatball. Like you're, <laughs> you're really. Like, is that an Italian thing? No, like you, you are made of ha- like yeah. a quarter of you was meatball. So there's a couple things you wanted that you didn't get yesterday. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. To eliminate this for learn, it's after getting a car insurance rebate at 26, mm-hmm. a finger in the ass is really all men have to look forward mm-hmm. to. It's true. It's our last rite of passage. It yeah. is. Yeah. And I've heard about it a lot in my life. It's a milestone. Yeah. It is. It, it is. really isn't a big deal. Unless yeah. yeah, unless you have a doctor with a giant hand, which I do not. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's like Tony Robbins. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Banana hands. Yeah, man, he's so got some big hands. Vin Diesel walked in. <laughs> no. Can you get your assistant and take his word for it, please? No, I was worried about my blood pressure. Has it been high? Uh it it tends to run high, but it was fine yesterday, great. That was yeah. a relief. I'm telling you, man, bubble baths. Start taking them. I'm going to take yep. a bubble bath. Call back from yesterday's show. Now I'm going to take a bubble bath. But uh, now, you know, we'll do the full panel. We'll do the cholesterol stuff. Mm-hmm. That's another, you know, getting up there. Getting up there, guys. 45. Gotta take care Going of Going through the change. <laughs> and Man. now you read your chart. You know, before they would just tell you, like, everything's fine. You might be a little bit high on this, so cut back on the meatballs or, or whatever. But now you're actually seeing your own chart. So you get to see all these giant words, and you go, wait a second, it's slightly above average. What the hell is that? What, what am I supposed yeah. to do? Well, I don't you even know, know what that word is. They got that app, you know, that Mercy app where they yeah. load all your stuff in there. Mm, awesome. You know, it is too much information sometimes. <laughs> that's oh. what I mean. But but are you, you going to not look at it? Of I course look I'm going to look time. at it. I look at it every time. I go down the whole thing. I go, oh, God, what? Huh. How do I fix that word? I don't. I don't know what that is. What am I supposed to do to fix it? Do I'm they, low in niacin. Oh. Do you not? Have I don't know what that is. The Mercy app. Whenever you get your Quest results back, because I just got blood work done about a month ago, and it shows you like a um, spectrum. Yeah, yeah. And then it tells you where you are. Yeah, and the threshold. And the threshold. And like to me, that is just. I go hypochondriac deep dive on that. Like mm-hmm. I start because my bad cholesterol is a little bit elevated. I got oh, heart disease. Oh man. So I need to cut Ooh. back on no more meat chicken for nachos. You. Hard yeah. subject. Right, yeah. You know? Well, are you somebody that gets so lost in the numbers and so caught up that it's going to make you sick looking at the numbers? Yeah. Like my white... You access to too much information. My white blood cell count is very low, and that freaks me out. Like, does the doctor have to tell you, Oh yeah, you're going to be okay? Oh, yeah. I have the best doctor. She knows I'm a, hypo- I am a hypochondriac. So, like, the minute I see something, she's like, shut up. You know, like, she, like, tells me straight up and, and talks to me in a way that... Is effective. I'll it's say. the only thing in life that I want to be average in. Uh, you know, I just, I want, please, just, I want to be in the middle. Mm-hmm. I know, I'm just going to these... throw a number out there, like, so th- So let's say, for whatever it is, uh, the the elevated is, or an average is the number 90, and you're like 92, and you're like, oh my God. Go, yeah. yeah. Dang, what Ooh, am I supposed to do Oh man, now? I need to start, you start calling your <laughs> friends, take a day off. goodbye. Yeah. There goes lunch plans. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> Guys, it's a my, 92. My Dude, best uh, friend is a trauma nurse for kids and she's so she's a doctor she's like she knows a lot and I, anything that's going on with me i tell her and she thinks i'm a psychopath but she <laughs> loves me and she deals with me and i and she's talked me down a lot especially these mm-hmm. last couple of years with covid like freaked me out to the max i mean i was on the edge every damn day i'm much better now but um Let yeah. chill. i gotta cancel i gotta cancel lunch today my to billy chill. rubin is sky I can't high deal. i don't know but i can't Look. deal i'm gonna be in bed just with a cover like a blanket's <laughs> over my head yeah. the entire day but hey and that was me guys and i'm really proud of this i'm not trying to make light of this so i've had a prescription for xanax for like 10 plus years and coming up in um september i believe september 9th it will be my f- one year solid without having oh, to take a Xanax. Yeah. That's, awesome. that's huge. And, nice and that, job. That's huge Get for that me spot because on your elbow checked out though. Yeah, I will. <laughs> so I mean, like, discolored. I am coming through my <laughs> hypochondria. <laughs> Torture. What are do you doing? Damn it, Rafe. <laughs> she just looked at it. Oh, she just looked at it. She's rubbing it now. No my I'm just eczema. kidding. I see a new mole. Uh, <laughs> I know what you're saying, though. I do the same thing. Those awesome. goddamn charts, I can't not look at them. No, and again, it's access to too much information. Mm-hmm. Well, you make no. yourself crazy. Yeah. You can make yourself crazy. Yeah. It's, it's why WebMD is bad. It's uh, yeah, but WebMD up, is like... Everybody's <laughs> looking up symptoms and... Yeah, yeah. this is all the general stuff, though. This, this is my test, and this is where it says you're supposed to be... Here's the average spectrum, and here's where you are. This is high. And, but, it, but it's overreacting stuff. to something that maybe you shouldn't be overreacting <gasps> to. Well, well look, here's the, here's the real problem is I don't react. I don't do anything. I don't make any changes. Mm-hmm. I just freak Talk out. About learn. It. Oh. But do you actually react? Like, do you, do you make any changes when you see that kind of stuff, or you just I freak do. out about it? No, I do. Like, my cholesterol is high, so Let I'm, me look I'm at my trying chart to make here. changes. I'm, uh, oh, uh, 
I'm elevated for crazy. Good. Yeah, no, we know this. <laughs> That's a given. <laughs> All right, today is uh, August 23rd. Back in the day, 76 years ago, 1947, the first Little League World Series takes place in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. I guess that's going on now. Anybody know who's in the uh, in the finals? Let's Little see. League World Series? The Baby Yankees. Man, the that was always the dream. Yankees. What? Make the Little League World Series. Yeah. Uh, well, it would be the all, it would be the All Star team you from your 12, 13, uh, no, uh, uh, 11, 12 year old Little League team. Those like eleven and twelve year ever. olds. <laughs> Isn't doesn't Cuba have a team in this? Because I've heard some. I know we'll get to that later, but well, it's whatever USA team versus the world. Um, I remember uh, you know being so jealous of those kids. Spend the whole summer playing tournament oh, baseball. So cool, man. Nolansville Little League plays another elimination game at the Little League World Series against El Segundo, California. Mm. Today. Oh, so they're still going through. The... Yeah, they beat Henderson, Nevada. Uh, 58 years ago, 1965, The Sound of Music was released, starring uh, Julie Andrews. 40 years ago, 1983, Dexie's Midnight Runners went to the top of the Billboard Singles Chart with Come On Eileen, the group's only U.S. number one. Hey, wait a second. So the Little League World Series, you, you said that's just an all-star group from your region? Yeah. Uh, you, from your, so I played in uh, uh, West Nyack Little League when I was uh, 11 and 12 years old. Okay, and they would just so take... So it was the all-stars okay, from so, that. So they take the stars. And then you do uh, <laughs> regional tournament, state tournament. Wow. Okay. And you'd work your way up to the Little League. That's World a Series. lot of games. It's a lot of games. Wild. A it single was way different. You don't know that as a kid when you're watching it. You're like, "How's my team go to the? We won. We won our our little region. five or our little. Yeah. But you don't realize that there's like these Babe Ruth leagues. Later I on, I played in one, but it was like they basically cherry pick the region, the best players on each team, and they form the super team and then you do like then you play way more games in the summer you're gotcha. playing like 40 some odd games in the summer and you're traveling all over the it's like a traveling league yeah they like take the best kids from whatever area but you don't know that when you watch it as a kid you're like there's hey we can go no nah. no we can't <laughs> no nah, we can't dude. not not with him on first I'll no tell you no that. we can't not with darren out in the outfield yeah, <laughs> spinning darren. around in circles and kicking dirt clods up in the air darren right field batting ninth <sighs> Uh, 38 years ago, 1985, Teen Wolf is released starring Michael J. Fox as a basketball-playing werewolf. Man. 32 years ago, 1991, the Super Nintendo goes on sale in North America. Uh, Super Nintendo. Anybody have one? Oh, yeah. Mm -mm. Super oh, Nintendo. Rich? No. My, my Not super, when you were supposed to. Super Nintendo. My Super Nintendo came with F-Zero. You remember F-Zero? Oh, I was about to say, Super great. Nintendo launched with only five games. Like, five games available. Super Mario World, which was bundled with the system. Then you add SimCity, and then three flying-based games, F-Zero, Pilot Wings, and Gradius III. F-Zero was awesome. Yep. But even with that limited launch lineup, and even though its rival, Sega Genesis, had a two-year head start, Super Nintendo still wound up outselling the Genesis over the course of their battle by 1.5 million units. And you know what put Super Nintendo on the map after... Um after that first wave was gone, with the the thing that got the kids to get it eventually was Street Fighter Two, right? Street Fighter Two is on. I don't know what put them over the top. I want to say, but I know I know Super Nintendo wound up winning. I want to say all my friends that war. didn't have Super Nintendo for one reason or another, as soon as Street Fighter Two was out, everybody had Super Nintendo. I had a Genesis. I never had a Super Nintendo. I had the Genesis too. That was that came with Sonic, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, and then Mortal Kombat. Oh, put that yeah. on. So once Mortal Kombat and and, Super, and, uh, and uh, Street Fighter Two are out, everybody had both systems. Mm. Man, you figured it out. You cut lawns. You did whatever you had to do to get both of those platforms. I never had the TV system. I always had like a Sega Game Gear or a Game Boy. That's those the only. Those are sweet yeah. too. Says those are extent. Sweet. Uh, Twenty-five years ago, nineteen ninety-eight, that '70s show debuts on Fox, and twenty-three years ago in the year two thousand, the final episode of the first Survivor. Gave us the unforgettable and obviously contrived snake rat speech and revealed who was the winner of the first Survivor. Anybody uh, remember his name? Richard Hatch. Richard Hatch. Good wow. for you, buddy. Yeah, what's up, dude? First of all... Uh, he was I, a million-dollar winner. I only remember that because didn't he get arrested for not paying taxes That's on right. that? That's right. Tax evading Richard Hatch <laughs> was the million-dollar winner. But he was the one that was like always shirtless and just was like, screw you guys. Oh, he was. Oh, he was naked? Dude. Oh, and he was like, he was playing the game, man. He played the game. 
he was like a real a hole, but wound up winning the uh, yeah. winning the entire. He was thing. one of those brutal ones. That usually like, works. I'm not here to look good on TV. I don't care about you. I don't care about this. I'm I'm, I'm here I'm to winning, win and go home did. with money and not pay taxes. Not pay taxes on it. All right, that's what happened back in the day. All right, time to find out what's going on in the world of music and entertainment with your crap on celebrities. And it's brought to you by Bright House Plumbing. Call the best. Flush the rest. Brighthouseco.com. 636-600-0188. Well, Beyonce was in town on Monday. Did anybody go? No. Uh, no, I knew, I, knew I, was people, I knew people who did go. It was a great show, I heard. Uh, from what I hear, uh, reviews, are, it was great. Tim, uh, Tim Convy down, down the hall. He went with his wife, and he said, "If he's a, first of all, it was incredible." He said everybody was like dressed to the nines. Oh yeah, and he goes, "I just kept looking around, going, there's no way all these people are from St. Louis. This is not like it didn't really? feel." He's like, "It didn't feel like a St. Louis crowd." He goes, "But it is Beyonce, so people came in from all over." All yeah, over. it wasn't sold out. I'll tell you that, right? It did not sell out, which is surprising. Uh, I don't know when the last time she was here, but I mean that place holds a lot of people. Sure, sixty mm -hmm. sixty thousand. Mm -hmm. Well, she was in town. Great show. Her entire family was here. Blue Ivy actually came out. Her <laughs> oh. eldest daughter came out on stage to dance with her. But Jay-Z was also in town, and he went down to the uh, Pulitzer Arts Foundation on Washington Avenue, which is currently closed, but they opened it up special for Jay-Z. Now, people are speculating with the Riverfront Times, maybe Jay was buying some art because... Beyonce and Jay-Z just bought the most expensive house in the state of California. <laughs> they paid $200 million in cash what? for this house. Um, and so they could have some possible Looking art from St. Stuff. Louis. Looking to put yeah. some, some art on the walls, huh? Yeah. I bet their house is cool as hell, too. Oh, you for know? 200 mil? It better be cool. Oh. But yeah. with, like, cool art, like, their style was prob is probably really, really interesting. Uh, Jelly Roll was just here as well. That was a sold-out show at the amphitheater. And he's serious about dropping some weight. He's off to a good start. He uh, posted good. an Instagram for video from St. Louis uh, with his nutritionist, and he's lost 23 pounds in two weeks during this tour. And the clip shows him making a stop here in our town and working on some new songs and just talking about the uh, the weight that he's lost. So good for him. Lots of people uh, speculating he's using Ozempic. Man, but, he he, but, he, that. but that's a guy. I mean, he's a big guy. Yeah. He's a big guy. He'd benefit from it for sure and, uh, if he wants to do that. I know somebody said they were backstage and they saw him try to go up some stairs and he... He's such a big guy, gets winded, you know, going mm. up three stairs. Yeah. Man. And it's hard to work out when you, you know, if, if you're winded easily, like, you know, people are like, well, just don't do Ozempic and just go run. Well, it's like, he's a big guy. It's not going to be the same as if you're half of his size trying to lose some weight. It's just, you know, it's I wish struggle. nothing but the best, and I want the guy to be around for a while. Yeah. Uh, that weight. You don't see any really fat old people. Am I right? Yeah, obesity is a big issue for sure. Well. What? We went to Golden Corral. I saw a couple. Well, you ever see like a 400 pound 89 right. year old? You're right. You're right. You're right. No. Yeah, take care you of yourselves. The Killers are teasing a new music. Well, they have been teasing new music on their social media, and they have announced that come this Friday, new single from The Killers called Your Side of Town will be out. Um, the reason from Hoobastank, did you like that song? Sure, man. I love yeah. that song. It just passed 1 billion views on YouTube, so wow. congratulations to them. Thank so you, man. 1 billion views on YouTube. So they got, let me do the math there. Say how much money they got off that. We, uh, let we, me do the math. Okay. We had them on the show. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're some of the greatest guys in all I of I love Hoobastank. Yeah. Great uh, guys. D Doug, uh, I think it was on Doug's thing or maybe Hoobastank's if you watch their Instagram. <laughs> the, the, I think it was the day that it hit a billion views. He was, there was a, uh, like a karaoke bar and it was a, a post that said something like horrible butt rock, uh, karaoke and people were all doing it and it pans over <laughs> and Doug is sitting, leaning up against the rail, just watching them. Like they have no idea that the singer of Hoobastank is watching them Aww. drunkenly do the reason. Nah. It's just a great, <laughs> it's great. a great well, video. One, Those are great guys. One billion views on YouTube. Uh -huh. So, uh, carry the okay. zero. Well, I was, hang on, this is a little complex. Hey, King Scott, I think, didn't you do a song in their studio? They yeah, I recorded $6.25. Uh, $6, good for them. For a billion views, so yeah. congratulations. I recorded with Hoover Chris. We did a song together, and he was drums on that. It was pretty amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, that guy's awesome. Hey, what's up with your music? Do you got anything coming out soon? Yeah, I do. 
Okay. Very soon. Very soon. Very good. Very excited. Uh, Drew Barrymore was speaking on stage with singer Renee Rapp in New York City when a very weird balding man came down the aisle and said, quote, you know who I am. I need to see you at some point while you're in New York. He was then escorted out by security and Drew and Renee both like <laughs> were shuffled off the stage very quickly and came back. But this guy, like you watch the video and we'll put it up on the blog, but uh, this guy balding, he looks to have like some sort of Hawaiian shirt on, like very strange, but the, if you're going to say anything to get attention and try and get somebody to meet with you, you know who I am. I need to see you at I some need point. To see you. <laughs> like, so they escorted her. Gone are the days of, of uh, stage crashers jumping on stage and the oh. person's still staying there. Remember Soy Bomb? No. Oh, oh, you don't yeah. remember Soy Bomb? Oh, yeah, yeah. Bob Dylan was playing. Was it the Grammys? Oh, no. And a guy had written soy bomb on his bare chest <laughs> and got up there and danced behind. Like, nobody came and ushered Bob Dylan off stage. Wow. Dang. Now they are. The guy was dancing like a maniac as Bob Dylan's playing. Yeah, what, what, it was an award show. I think it was 98. I think it was the Grammys. Soy 1998 bomb. Grammys. Soy right, bomb. Right here. Let's see. Yeah, that and, was... And uh, oh, God. Skip the ad. Skip the ad. <laughs> <laughs> skip the ad. Oh, and he just danced, yeah. like like interpretive dance. No, no, uh, no security. No security Hi. came to take Bob Dylan off stage. <laughs> That's Jacob Vulnerable Dylan. old man. Yeah, there's Bob Jeez. and there's Soy Bomb. Ted, whatever his name. 1998. Is. Was it a good dance, dude? I remember no. our uh, we had a, a couple security guys a, at one point, and a um, couple of them were some some bigger dudes, and a couple of them were some smaller dudes that come from real rough backgrounds, and they were waiting. For the opportunity. Waiting to whoop somebody. <laughs> oh, my gosh, uh, Please dude. do me a favor. Come on stage. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. We didn't know it. Come on stage. We didn't know it until we are playing this, this show in Vegas or someplace, and this dude rushed our singer. And uh, I'm telling you, it was like a foot and a half before he got to the singer, and, and, our, and, our, and our guy just went... I mean, football. This guy was maybe all of four or five, five foot two. It's real small guy, but he tackled this dude. They went flying twelve feet. It was the coolest That's thing. Why I got into the ever. game, man? It was all on video. People were like, That's "Oh the my moment. god!" Did that you notice the that? Can't wait like to annihilate an emo kid. When your band had security, then whenever the band didn't have security, like the no fights outside of that. Whenever security was there, all of a sudden we had fights. <laughs> like crazy. I don't know if you're gonna talk about the uh, Taylor Swift security guard that got fired. No. About this story. Mm -hmm. Oh, what happened? So, not for Taylor Swift herself, but was working security at one of these stadium concerts. Such wind up being a security guard placed in front of the stage. Mm -hmm. Huge Taylor Swift fan. In fact, there was a video viral of him singing okay. as he as she was playing. Anyway, uh, he was fired because he had given, I guess, the people that were in front of him his phone, saying, "Hey, if she winds up." Being above me, take a picture oh. of me and, beyond, uh, and me and Taylor. He was yeah. fired because that that leaves because them vulnerable. You're, no, because you're not supposed to be worrying about it's unprofessional having a picture taken when Taylor Swift's behind you. Yeah, yeah. You're supposed to be protecting the stage. Right. Yeah. It's go to the concert or don't work it. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's it's work the concert or go to the concert. Right. As a or bring your spouse or your kid and be like, hey. I'm going to be working, but if Dad, you know, asking somebody, no, I want you paying attention well, to protecting the attention. stage. Uh, one of my favorite celebrities and actresses is Jennifer Aniston, and I just love her so much. Uh, she's going to be uh, gracing the Wall Street Journal magazine, and she talks in this article about how recently an esthetician talked her into getting a salmon sperm facial. Uh, she said, didn't really do anything. Um, she goes, how do you get the salmon sperm? She had a lot of questions. Yeah. Didn't really see any glow afterwards, so maybe don't do that. But then, Salmon sperm? Salmon sperm. And good question, like, how do they get it? Like a needle? There's some cat in Montana uh, that's like, I'm, I'm getting this for Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> I'll have the Sakai Bukaki, please. Oh. Yes. Mm. Um, she also... Yes. <laughs> Uh, Tom? Oh, here we go. Tom. Bu uh, Bu there, thank you. Uh, Bukaki. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Tom Brokaw, everybody. Uh. And so she talked about that, and then she also dived into how she uh, doesn't understand cancel, cancel culture. She talks about how there, you know, there's no redemption. She says, I don't know. I'm probably going to get canceled for saying this. She goes, I don't put everybody in the Harvey Weinstein basket. Uh, she also talked about 
how relationships are still a challenge for her. She's dated some of the most beautiful men in Hollywood. She's been married to Brad Pitt, Justin Theroux, just to name a couple. Um, and I thought this was really excellent. She and Adam Sandler are such good friends. The Sandler family, so Adam Sandler, his wife Jackie, and their two girls, every year for Mother's Day send Jen like a bouquet of flowers. Um, which is really sweet Boo because uh, bouquet, bouquet of flowers, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and they do this because Jennifer Anderson over her life has been interviewed because she doesn't have children. People are so curious about that, and she'd opened up a couple of years ago about how she struggled with IVF, and she just essentially just gave up on it. And so I think it's really sweet that the Sandler family sends her a bouquet of flowers. That's nice. Isn't that yeah. sweet? That's nice. Yeah. I, it makes me love Adam Sandler even more than I already do. Uh, Angelina Jolie got some more tattoos, this time on her middle fingers. And the tattoo artist had to, in an Instagram post, say that this has nothing to do with Brad Pitt. They've blurred out what exactly the artwork is on the middle fingers. I'm so interested. Like, why it did they have- It says F Brad, but it has nothing to do with Brad. It has nothing to do with Brad. Hmm. I bet it's a password to her email. They blurred it out. They blurred it out. Maybe they don't want anybody copying it. Mm. But I don't know. I'm but you, you're We're choosing just to, to get a reason. tattoo in a visible place, and you're a famous person. So, like, isn't isn't it going to be a matter of time. She's gonna, until she releases the picture? You know, anywhere she goes, people are going to insult her just in hopes they flip her off. Right. Kind of yeah, cut, next time you see Angelina Jolie point. on the highway, cut her off. Yeah. See, see, what, happens, see, what, see what that tattoo says. Oh wait, wait, wait. Who 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 posted it? The, the tattoo artist. artist. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. I can see. I can see. I can see you blurring that out. Just for you're privacy. Like, eh. yeah, yeah. You're like, hey, this is your your tattoo to share when you want to share. Uh, none of us in here have watched Frasier. Did you guys watch it? Oh, when I, was I on? mean, I've seen a couple Frasier. episodes. I, I wasn't. So a, I wasn't a regular. Great watcher. show. Yeah, I've never I've watched, watched it. it. Probably about three times through. I don't know. I love that series. You do? Yeah. Well, good good news, Scott. It's coming back to Paramount Plus on October 12th. Now, the first two episodes are going to run back-to-back -back on CBS on October 17th. The new season consists of 10 episodes. Of course, Kelsey Grammer will be returning as Dr. Fraser Crane. And um, anyway, this Niles. is a revival. Yep. Niles <laughs> Crane. They're bringing their dad back. His brother. I thought yeah. they said he wasn't coming back. Yeah, I don't think he's coming back. Which is odd because he was a huge, David Hyde Pierce, he's not a huge part of the show. Oh, Ra what, he's so there fun was, on uh, there. Roz, right? The Roz yeah, Roz is the, awesome. Was the producer, mm -hmm. his producer for his radio show. David Dahl. Daphne. Daphne was the housekeeper. Daphne's the yeah. one with the kind of strange voice, right? The stunning English lady. She was the English lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the dad's dead. The dog's dead. Oh. Eddie. Eddie the dog. What? The dog died in the series? He got stuck in that old... chair. They put the leg down on the chair and it no, smashed not, No, Niles backed over him. Uh, what? Are you serious? That that's that, not happening. With the car or with the rocking no, chair? No, stop it. Stop this. <laughs> that's what happened with my dad. We're my not dad. talking about dead dogs on the show well, anymore. Dad my dad could, <laughs> no, my dad killed our cat with the recliner. Okay, um. I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you guys are my favorite time. Was, All right. And finally. It was an finally, accident. Uprocks.com. And I have a big problem with this list, and that's why I'm bringing it up. Uprocks. Uprocks is a legit site. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The ranking of the top 50 best soundtracks of all time. We're going to go into the top 10. I'm best soundtracks of all time. Yes, this is important. Forrest Gump's soundtrack better be in the Ooh, top, in the top 10. Good call. That's Double disc, bazillion copies. great tunes on there. It's not, Riz. Oh. oh. Um, it's not. Well, okay, so we're doing Can You Feel the Punk Tonight on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and say there has to be a Disney one or five on there, um, including The Lion King. The Lion King yep. soundtrack is spectacular. Are these yeah. rock soundtracks? These are normal. So these are, I, these not are compilations. These are, Purple Rain. So like Purple the Rain is the number one on okay. the list. Yeah. Okay. Prince, yes, okay. Uh, mm. Footloose. Uh, so if we're not doing Ooh. originals, we're doing like compilations. Let's go. What's, Almost Famous. No. What? No, no. Think about like Wizard. lead track ones. Um, the Whitney Houston, Kevin Bodyguard? Cost. Yeah, oh, Bodyguard. 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 The Bodyguard. That came in at number 29, not even top 10. Think about movies that you remember the soundtracks from. What, Tommy spotting. Boy. The best soundtrack of all time, flat out period, that beats even Purple Rain is the Blues Brothers. And yep. you can argue with me all day, but not that's... Not top 10. That, Saturday Night Fever. Come on. Saturday Night Fever is number two. I mean, that's BG's. I've said Footloose like four times. I know. It's not top 10. Dirty Dancing. Uh, Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing, number 20. Not even top 10. Top Gun. UHF. What'd you say? Top, top Gun. Gun. Top Gun. Oh, yeah. Not top 10. UHF? Ghostbusters. No. No. Um, like, let me say this. Like, I, I took some from the top 50. Like, where, where was Blue Any Brothers? of the Batman? Because remember, remember. Uh, oh, yeah, those uh, were good. Returns. Seal. Touch me, Seal, kill kiss me, by kiss Rose. me, kill and me. You too. Yeah. Batman Forever came in at number 33. 
the reason that this list does not make any damn sense is because one of the soundtracks that is talked about throughout time is the Crow soundtrack. Yeah, that one's... That is number 35 on the list. Mm. Did not crack the top 10. Ah. Another link in the list, The Breakfast Club is at number 50. Cruel Intentions. Remember that soundtrack? The newer Godzilla one had a lot of great songs on there. Breakfast Club is... Cable that guy that is a good one. That is a good one. I'm gonna, Cable Guy? Let me list this top 10. Okay. And you guys tell me if you agree with this. Number 10, Hard Day's Night. Okay. All Beatles stuff, yeah. Number 9, Train Spotting. Yeah. Great I soundtrack. I remember that one. Number 8, Dazed and Confused. Mm. Oh, that, but that oh, was so... Yeah. All yeah. 70s. It's easy and obvious. It's yeah. just a Spotify confused, playlist. But it's a great soundtrack. It is. Okay, but this is a Spotify playlist. Number 7, <laughs> American Graffiti. It's just so basic ass. Like, how elementary school can you get with... But putting that together, like, come on, man, that doesn't make it great. It makes it easy. Go on. Calm number, down. <laughs> number six. No, I love it. Number six, Boogie Nights. Like, I don't remember any of the music from oh, Boogie Nights. Oh, are you serious? Sister Christian. Sister Christian. When he's <laughs> popping the he's fireworks, throwing fireworks in the, back, in the house. That's the only song you remember, though? Dude, like, it yeah. was spectacularly uh, selected. Like, that, that, was, that was not a song that was on anybody's Alfred radar Molina. when that movie came Alfred out. Alfred Molina. In the uh, robe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> number five. <laughs> number five, Superfly. I've never seen it. Classic. Uh, is it Disco? Is oh, 70s. how about Shaft? Shaft, Shaft was on the list, but way down on the list. Uh, number four, and this I agree with this, Singles. That soundtrack was excellent. Oh, uh, that's that? all the grunge stuff. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, Pearl Jam. Alice in Chains. Alice Chains. Chains. Oh, Mad okay. Season, I oh, think. Yeah. Again, great, so just, great like, soundtrack. Yeah, let's just take the uh, 90s radio playlist. Oh, stop it. There were the songs soundtrack? specifically Ooh. for that soundtrack. Oh, okay. Well, Alice in Chains is in the that movie. Means like, State of Love and Trust, I think, from Pearl Jam was specifically on that soundtrack. Okay, right. perfect. And that makes sense. That makes sense. What about that thing you do? That's going to be okay. I appreciate that. No, Thank you for the info. Thank you for the info. Number three, Pulp Fiction. Had some pretty had some moments in the movie that you you would think of with the music, but I can't remember who exactly was on that soundtrack. Yeah, it's I the, just know the it's meme the, of their heads bobbing. It's like the, the surf dancing. rock and, yeah, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Like Maybe. Dick Dale. And because Dick Dale? now that we know that that's like Tarantino's bag, mm -hmm. um, it is less impressive, but when that came out, it was like a whoa. That was like, cool. This was such a cool use of that music. So yeah, I, I would say that that deserves me. Number two, Saturday Night Fever, and number one, Purple Rain. But then they left off things like The Bodyguard, Batman Forever, The Crow, Romeo and Juliet, Clueless soundtrack was good, Garden State, Cruel Intentions, Back to the Future, and The Breakfast Club all were past, like, were all late in this list, oh, and I just feel like that future. was... And, um, no, or, I mean, uh, uh, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? That's that was on the list, too. Blues Brothers wasn't... I don't believe so. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. Yeah, that's that, silly. That anyway. was so well, excellent. Well, these are probably... Yeah. Major Another list we get to disagree with. Yeah, chuck it in the trash, please. Aww. In the trash. It was good. Celeb Thank you, celebrity celebrating a birthday today. Today is uh, Kobe Bryant's birthday. Uh, although he passed in 2020, Lil Yachty is 26. Jeremy Lin is 35. Skylar Gordy, that's Barry Gordy's grandson, and Sky Blue in LMFAO. Yeah. Skylar is 37. Julian Casablancas. Who's oh, that, Riz? Strokes. That's right, lead singer of the Strokes. I saw him and urinate in a, in a uh, potted plant at a radio station once. <laughs> All right. Well, Julian's 45. Ray Park, Ooh, that's Darth Maul. And the Phantom Menace, that's Toad. And the X-Men, Snake Eyes, and G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra. Ray Park is 49. Jay Moore is 53. Shelley Long, that's Diane from Cheers. She is 74. Rick Springfield, also 74. Uh, did you know that before Jesse's Girl and all that, he was a soap opera actor? Yeah, what, well, General Hospital? I don't know, but I yeah. never knew that. He came back after his music career and reprised that role. Yeah, was it General General Hospital? General, General Hospital. Hospital is a General totally Hospital. General Hospital. 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 He was in General Hospital. That was Hospital. Jeff's favorite. Uh, Rudy Rudiger, the real life inspiration for the movie Rudy, which did not go. It as, was. It uh, was as uh, real life went, from yeah, what I understand. How, they they. Hollywooded it up. Joe Montana, who was quarterback of Rudy's Notre Dame team, says a lot of the touching inspirational aspects of the movie were bull. Uh, Rudy Rudiger is 75, and Barbara Eden, that's Jeannie on I Dream of Jeannie, still, still rocking kicking it. it. Loved her. 92 freaking years old. Wanted Congratulations. to live in that bottle. She had that bottle that was all pillows. Yeah. Boy, a lot of people are saying Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. Should have been on that soundtrack list. That's a good yeah. one. I think we should start doing, I'm going to start tweeting out these lists after we get them done, and people can just tear them apart, too. Tear them apart. Uh, today's porno birthday, which is being brought to you by Patricia's, where fun and fantasy media, is Carmen Luvana. Greece? Carmen Luvana. Oh, Greece. Greece wasn't on there? <sighs> get the f*** out of here.
Yeah. Anyway, today's birthday girl has been in 142 fine films, including American Badasses, Big Ass Orgy, Dawn of the Debutantes 4, Flight 69, Girls Night Out in Tijuana, Legendary Lesbians, Monster Meat 1, The Notorious SLUT, Southern California Sluts 5, and who could forget a role in 2004's Swinging in the USA. Carmen Labana is 42 years old. That's your porno birthday. Those were crappy birthdays, and that was your crap on celebrities. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. Let's give away some stuff. We're going to play Riz Show Password. Woo! Yeah. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll get some uh, people on the phone. We'll pick two callers. You guys will pick teammates. Anybody here on the Riz Show. Uh, Rafe included. Yes. Rafe's in on that, too. Okay. Right? Is that what we did last time? Or are you just a host? I usually host, but I, I could be included. It doesn't matter. I just don't have... I know the words, so maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, all right. I'm going right. to give you guys the words in real time, so I would yeah, have... So, okay, so everybody but Rafe. Okay, yeah. pick a teammate. I'll just host. Uh, and we'll go back and forth giving you one word, clues as to what the password is, you against the listener, mm -hmm. and uh, it's best of, uh, best of three. Or best of best five. of three. Best of so three. you'll each you'll get three chances. Uh, whoever wins the first password has the option to play or pass on the next one, because sometimes it may be ben they may think that it's beneficial to have like well, we're not going to get this in one clue, right? So let's, let's I'm gonna, get another I'm one. I'm going to hedge my bets that I can play off the other person's. Okay. Clue. It's, it's, once we get going, it's easy. Yeah, it's real easy. Gotta it's pay easy. attention. Well, it should be. Well, it should be easy. You got, guys, you got to pay attention. And what we mean Please. by that is listen to the previous things that are being said. Listen before to the previous clues journey. for the love of God. To be clear, you are guessing the same word. Yeah. Especially now that we know that Riz has high blood pressure. Please, for the I love don't of God, have high blood listening. pressure. <laughs> Where's your face? I found that out yesterday. Billy Rubin or something. 314 624 3833, 618 398 3833. We got tickets to go see The Offspring, Big Summer Show, uh, Sunday. Over at the amphitheater, we got tickets to go see Disturbed next Tuesday at the amphitheater, playing with Breaking Benjamin. Tickets to go see Guar next Wednesday over at the pageant. And tickets to go see Shine Down with Papa Roach, Big Summer Show, September 3rd at the amphitheater. 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. Riz Show Password is next. But there was one uh, video I saw this morning had me shaking my head. Um, man, you want to know how to get on a pilot's bad side? Yes. Ask them if they've been drinking just as they're about to get on their plane. <laughs> <laughs> so this, uh, and we'll, we'll put it in quotes, comedian tried that on a pilot walking into the jet bridge. Mm. And the pilot was furious. Furious. First of all, this douchebag comedian plugged his his website before he, <clears throat> you know, before he uh, asked the pilot the question. So listen how this turned out. How you doing? Good. Are you the pilot of this flight? Yeah. What's up? You haven't been drinking or anything, have you? You know what? It's <laughs> I'm joking around. No, it's I'm joke. not joking. It's a joke, sir. I'm not joking. I can off right now. Oh my God! You ever heard of a joke? I'm a comedian. Oh, my God. You ever heard of a joke? Wow. Mm. Do you not want to just uh, take a glove and hit him with the glove in the face? You ever heard of a joke? Did you see a video of that pilot who was had an axe and he was just beating the hell out of the Yes, we'll date? get to that in Friday Fail Stories. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. No, that's that's fine. That <laughs> pilot snapped. This guy is about to snap on this quote-unquote comedian. I'm not joking. I can off right now. Oh, my God. You ever heard of a joke? I'm a comedian. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm a comedian. It was right. a joke. You, you don't do laugh. That. Excuse you me. Don't I'm very that. sorry I found it. Okay. And the reason being you don't do it because that gentleman right there and anybody who else is around now doubts what I do for a living. All right? So I don't go into your work. I understand. Me. It was a don't joke. Right. It didn't mean no offense. It didn't mean no offense. Wow. See what I mean about life? <laughs> what, what do you mean about, about life? <laughs> Just get on the damn plane and just get on the plane and have a nice day. Just smile at me and put your bag where it needs to go and shut the Leave hell the up. Leave the pilot alone. Don't talk to the pilot. He's got a job to do. 
Why is the pilot? You know what? I, it's nice that the pilots try to come out and be friendly. The guy was walking out of the plane. Oh, okay. I thought this was one of those whenever you go on a Southwest flight and like the pilot's there. The no, everybody's walking out of the plane. <laughs> the pilot is about to to get on the plane to do his job. Leave the pilot. I'm just get on the damn plane. Shut your mouth. And we'll all get to where we have to go. That's it. Mm -hmm. Please. I thought the pilot handled it pretty nicely. <clears throat> considering. I was at uh, Salt and Smoke last week because I was judging uh, the Battle of the Bands at Bush, you know, before the game. Yeah. And I went to Salt and Smoke to have a cocktail. And I was sitting there. I was actually on the phone with Victory Men's Health. They were giving me my blood work results. I'm sitting there, and this young man goes, hey, is this seat taken next to me at the bar? And I go, no. So I'm on the phone with my doctor, talking to them, hang up. And then I make a joke like, sorry, you had to kind of go through my whole health details at it and he was real nice and he's like you know what do you do and i'm like oh i'm on the risotto show and i go what do you do and he's like i'm a fedex pilot and i'm like that is so cool and then i like talk to him all about his life you know and I go, was he was he enjoying a cocktail too no he was not enjoying he was here for a layover uh he was enjoying dinner and he was like yeah i fly out later tonight you know, but it was interesting, like, to hear about his life because he was from Seattle. And he, he was friendly, but you could tell he was like, just don't talk to me. Like, you know, I... I you engaged. I engaged, but I was also trying to just be friendly. Just and, leave the pot alone. I know. See, I, I'm the part of the problem. Now, Rafe, as a comedian, <laughs> as a comedian, yeah. your thoughts on this guy? Uh, two things he did that comedians don't do. One, you know, if you don't ever have to say, oh, it's a joke. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> that means you're... And, and if you have to identify yourself multiple times, I'm a comedian. I am a comedian. You're not. You're not. You're a wannabe. You're aspiring. Yeah. I'd be curious, like, what is... But, I mean, everyone's got, like, a prank. You, everyone's got a f YouTube, TikTok prank. That's the weird thing about... Comedian is one of the weird... You don't have to have a license to have to be have, a comedian. There, it, all you got to do is write it in your bio on Instagram, and it's as true as you want it to be. Yeah. You do one open mic, you're technically a comedian. I'm a pilot. But, but if somebody goes, if I go to an, <laughs> if I go to an open mic. You have to mic, be licensed yeah. to have that, to oh. have that title. <laughs> if I sing karaoke one time, I don't get to just put musician in my, you know, because it's a provable thing. Like, oh, you're a musician. Cool. What? Play me a song. Yeah. Play a, an instrument. Like, well, I'm a karaoke. Well, I sing. I sing. Oh, what band are you in? Well, I karaoke. <laughs> then people. I like, sing in the oh, shower. You're in an a idiot. lot of bands. Yeah, that's that's funny. Like, yeah, you could say you're a comedian, and people will believe you. But you don't have to go through training. You don't have to have no. a license. Mm -hmm. You don't have to show a piece of paper, you know, with your picture on it saying, see, it says here, I'm a comedian. See this? My yeah. comedian pass. You guys don't see my comedian degree hanging on the wall <laughs> in our office. <laughs> Right. You don't even have to be funny. You can just harass a pilot on TikTok. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm a comedian. That, that just, does anybody get jokes nowadays? Uh, Let me, do you get the vibes that guy also talks about being from New York? One of the... Is that Andrew Dice Clay? Yeah. One something of the like that. best recent stand-up specials is Mike Birbiglia's Thank God for Jokes. And it came out, like, right around the pandemic. Uh, and he goes through, like, all of this. Like, when... About like why jokes are important, why you can joke about certain things. It's very meta because he talks about like jokes belong in the hands of professional comedians. And the reason we've seen this big pushback is because amateur joke tellers try to push the envelope because they think shocking and joking is the same thing. Mm. And then they make all these subjects, these taboo subjects that used to be easier to tackle for professionals, harder to navigate because, you know, you got hacks out there. Harassing pilots on the way. <laughs> well, even if he thought it was a joke, I get what the pilot's saying, too. Like, hey, man, don't put that out there. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah. being a little uptight. I will say Yeah, that. he's been a little uptight. was being a little... No he's way. Been, he's been a little... He, he may be, a, he, he may be a, being you a little uptight. You can't be too... No, he, he deserves to be uptight. This dude's literally responsible... For what? How many? Mm. What's the average flight? Two hundred lives. I agree. Two hundred people's lives. Two hundred families agree. are putting their lives in this guy's hand. He should be uptight. You better be uptight. You better be arrogant and uptight if you're flying a plane with me or my family in it. I'm telling you, you man. You can say, "Hey, lighten up a little bit." You know. Uh. -uh. And no. you're trying to throw him off the plane. Lighten up a little bit. He's trying to throw him off the plane. Good. They should be uptight. They should be high strung, and they should be able to do what damn near whatever they want. I wonder <laughs> if this guy. Was I don't know. High strung is the word. 
Uh, high not, strung? Not, okay, not, not high strung. Uh, but but you, you know what I'm saying. I'm like, freaking out. No, I'm like, in the cockpit. I'm yeah. freaking no, out, man. Don't tell a pilot to lighten up. That's ridiculous. I'm freaking out, but lucky for you, I'm arrogant. Yeah, but I think this guy probably was annoying looking from the start. Yeah, we didn't he is have annoying a chance. Looking, yeah. Like if a hot chick was like talking to him and like, hey, did you have a cocktail before? You know, his reaction would have been completely would different. Would have been way different. Yeah. How so many he, lives are you responsible for every day? A lot. Zero. <laughs> Zero. Oh, Unless God. someone's in your car. <laughs> And you should be thinking about it like that. Who but else like, is going to wake up St. Think, Louis? Hey, this guy. Like, how many yeah. how many gigs yeah. out there? How many gigs out there what I do. that you're doing twice a day that you're responsible for literally the, the lives of hundreds and hundreds of people? Just jokes, man. Come on, lighten up, Francis. No. I'm, 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 no, I'm here to defend a-hole pilots. Be an a-hole. No, I, listen. <laughs> Leave the pilots alone, okay? Just, please, please, like, just, just leave, leave the pilots alone. God, I don't leave them alone. Let them do their job. I don't want them angry at Bill in row four because of some the stupid comedian. Junk. <laughs> yeah. If only yeah. those just pilots could have something before the flight to kind yeah, of loosen, loosen up, up a little bit. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take the edge off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, you're right. <laughs> Uh, All right, let's let's uh, let's give away some stuff. We have tickets to go see The Offspring with Sum 41 Sunday over at the Amphitheater. We got tickets to go see Disturbed with uh, Breaking Ben next Tuesday over at the Amphitheater. Tickets to go see Guar next Wednesday at the pageant. And tickets to go see Shine Down with Papa Roach September 3rd over at the Amphitheater. And we are playing Riz Show Password. <laughs> so let's get two contestants. Each contestant will pick a Riz Show member. Uh, the Riz Show members will then give the clues... To the contestants and uh, whoever gets the word correct, two out of three, right? Two rounds out of three. That anyway. is correct. Okay. God, for the love of God, please pay attention. Yes. Pay attention to the clues before. <laughs> okay, let's go to uh, Tiffany. Tiffany, hello. Hello. Hi, Tiffany. Uh, hi. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, pick somebody, please. Uh, let's go with learn. All right, learn. So it's learn and Tiffany. Girl power. Let's do it, girl. Learn, girl, girl power going on there. Uh, David, hello. David. David. Yes. David. Yes. All right, pick. Already us. not listening. <laughs> pick, Ew, David. <laughs> pick a teammate. <laughs> Team Lindbergh, let's go. All right, so yeah, Moon. Baby. Okay, Moon and David. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll start. Give them the passwords, please. Okay. All right, <laughs> Tiffany and David, please, for the love of God, pay attention. Okay. okay. Okay, we'll start with Learn. Okay. Learn, your first clue. All right. To Tiffany. Tiff, here we go. Debbie Harry. That's two words, but we'll allow it. We'll allow it because <laughs> we'll it's a proper name. Debbie mm. Harry, yes. I have, I have no idea. Damn it. <laughs> to you, Moon. David? Your clue, yes. your clue is brunette. I have no clue. All right, Tiff. Good job, guys. Here we go. Tiffany, Tiff, Tiff. Um, Crushing it. Tiffany, hair. Mm. Uh, I think. Okay. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah, I hope work? you were listening. Now, before I, before we react to the word, we have to wait for the judge to give the thumbs up or th thumbs okay. down. Okay. 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 David, to you. <laughs> Marilyn Monroe. We're getting a little dicey with these two words, but I will. It's a name. We're getting so deep, I'm going to allow it. <laughs> Do it on. Um, um... It's not your turn, Tiffany. Uh, here. I'm not Sorry. sure. It's okay. It's okay. okay. Oh, Tiffany, shut your face. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Learn. What? Clue. Yes. Okay. Tiff. Hot. <laughs> Blondie. Uh. No. <laughs> Close. Dang it. David. Yes. Dumb. Can you repeat that? Dumb. D U M B. Dumb. Um. <laughs> Tiffany's a reaction. David. You're killing me, brother. David, yeah, we got, we got a 10 second delay. Tiffany. Tiff. 
Tell I, I have. Go, no, David, David, shut, shut up. your face. <laughs> David, you're done. All right. I need to mute my side when it's not my turn. Okay, okay. Tiff. <laughs> yeah. Beach. Blonde. Oh, yes. God. Yes. 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 David, the word was blonde. God dang, the man. The word was blonde. <laughs> Dumb blonde. Marilyn Monroe, okay, Debbie okay, Harry. Okay, she okay. said blonde. They are dumb blondes. Hair. Smart. Ones, that's why. Okay, close. Okay. 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 okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> now, Tiffany, I'm going to leave it up to you. Do you want to uh, get the clue first or second this next round? Uh, second. Second. Okay. So the new word well, is going to be shown. Okay. okay. We're going to have to get this in one, David. The new word is going to be shown here to the uh, to the. I thought we would let clue givers. The winner get, win. Get your guessing brain well, on. Well, you, since you guys will see the word, I thought the strategy would be you guys could decide if you want to pass or play. But I, that's all right. You guys get okay. it? Got the clue? Got the word? Yeah, let us decide. Oh, let me see. Let me see. It's okay. Let We've already made a choice this time. Let me see what it is. Okay. Oh, oh man. Oh, you this, don't want to guess along? this is super tough. Oh, yeah, you do need this to This is tough. Okay. Okay. It's a tough one. Um, <laughs> we got this, Tiffany. We got it. <laughs> all right. So David and Moon first. Here we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I, uh, I'm going to change my clue. And uh... <laughs> what? David, are you listening? Yes. Here's okay. your clue. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. Okay. Three what is words. That? Can All we right. do that? What is that? Can three, we be... it's one word three times. That's a, really that's strange. What is that? Come on. Ho, ho, ho. Come on. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, it's okay. That's all right. <clears throat> then you're going to go, um, All right, here we go. Okay. <laughs> Tiff. Stop kicking the shit. I'm so angry. Everybody, shut up. Macaroons. Why are you dancing? Why are you dancing? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think she thinks that's a better clue than it is. She's hey. very self-satisfied. Okay, go ahead. Ahead. With all the things you just said. <laughs> okay, Tiffany. Macaroons. I don't even know if you're saying it right. I'm probably not. You are. I'm trying to say macaroon. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, gosh, I'm gonna. Gosh, I'm sure it's a French French pastry chef. What, what's What's your word? It's uh, one word. Uh, one word. French. You got it. You got, you got to be it. kidding me. Yeah. You've got to be kidding yeah. me. Sweet. Yeah. Sorry, David. The dance was worth it. When Moon said, uh huh, huh, I thought of the French chef from The Little Mermaid. Yeah. And that's exactly, you did the game exactly right, Tiffany. I'm you did so it right. You right, listened and Tiffany. you put the clues together well, contextually. I'm glad I helped somebody. Hey, guys. What? That was a one sweet. word. We're having a good time. One, hey, one, one word. Let me reiterate one, the rules. A, that's one word. Here's how, the, here's how it's going to work In going French. forward. The password will be one word. There will never be multiple words. No names. It's not going to be a proper, someone's, yeah, it's not going to be a name. No and if it is, I would give you credit for this. The last, if it was like a, if it was the name of an actor, I would just give you credit for the last name. Uh, when you try to refrain from compound words, unless there's something like lipstick, that's fine. Let's try. Let's let's not take I mean, too many word, liberties. Uh -huh. But honestly, he did say the same word three times, which is a good loophole. I appreciate the loophole. I'm allowing it. All, how do you spell? Uh -huh. No, but also, I, don't know, I don't know if that's in the dictionary. Uh -huh. from, from now on, we're going to let you guys decide on the pass or play in studio because you're going to know the word. Okay, and you right. can help. I jumped the gun a little bit there, Rafe. It's okay. Let the yeah, listeners decide. It worked out. It worked out. All right, Elijah. Me. Hello. <laughs> I thought that was as good a good a clue as I could yep, get. I guess he's done. Bye. Uh, Patrick, hello. Happy birthday, Riz. Hey, thanks, buddy. Pick somebody. I pick Riz. Okay. Dude, we got this, buddy. Okay. All right. Uh, Mike, hello. Caller ID. What's up, dude? Uh, Mike, who uh, who do you want to play with? Moon. Moon. Yeah, baby. Okay. guess these people don't like winning. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. You just swept and no one picked you. This okay. has nothing to do with me. <laughs> Uh, all, all right, right Patrick, fellas. Patrick will go first since uh, I picked you first. Yep. Patrick will go sure. first. Gentlemen, your word is being presented. Let me okay. know when you have it. Give me Got a it. nod. Got it. Riz and Got Patrick, it. you will go first. Riz, please give a one-word clue for the password. It's a tough one. Is it? Patrick, listen closely. Trophy. Hmm. Winner. Excellent. That was a good call and response. That's the best one I've heard since we started this game. Thanks, Ray. High five. five. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, no, Mike. Thanks very much. Okay, Mike. No, it's not. Because it wasn't a clue, I'm going to use this as as the clue. My word is uh -huh. winner. Uh, 
Um, ceremony. Okay. Not a bad guess. Queen. Hmm. Hmm. Loser. Mm. Victor. Hmm. Well, Mike. Victor. Conquer. Conquer. We're dancing around it. We're getting for. We're getting. No, think of the other clues, guys. <laughs> Just, Once we you're get five a participant food. now. Yeah. Everybody's talking way Words. too much, by the way. Yes, I've been talking saying. way too much. All of this is filler. I haven't said a damn word. Patrick, yeah, pay attention. Right Here now. comes the fifth clue. Word. From Riz. <laughs> see how I gotta rein it in. Do you see stop how talking to him. Everybody stop talking. <laughs> oh, God. This is, a, this is a tough word. This is a very tough word. He's still, well, these are clues. He's throwing things you both out. Are, you both are, can't stop talking. Both of you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Boxing. Okay. Boxing. Five seconds. King. <sighs> All right. After we reach five, I repeat the clues. Okay. So, New okay. rule. Where did we okay. start? No, I did this last time. Trophy. Trophy. Winner. Winner. Queen. Queen. Victor. Victor. Boxing. Boxing. Moon, give your sixth clue to Mike. <sighs> Just say... Uh... <laughs> I'm making faces. Uh... It is a tough word. Yeah, uh, let's... Um... <laughs> I know there's one word that would unlock this. Man. But will you say it? Oh. Um. <sighs> People are losing their minds right now. I know. Are they, are they getting, are they getting it right? knowing what oh, it is? Oh. Wait, 10 clues ago. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's just say Rocky. Champion. Yay! Yay! Champion, Patrick. Yes, Virginia, wow. there is a Santa Claus. Wow, six clues deep on champion. All right, good job, Mike. <laughs> Can I also say, Ray, thank you, Mike. Giving the clue, thank you. Rereading the clues after the fifth one, I, I don't think is fair. It should be an even. It after should be six. six. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with that. Ooh. Or benefited. after four. Although you should be paying attention on your own. We but shouldn't even have he gets to, to go first. So after the fifth clue, that means the person who had the advantage of going first. Oh, uh, good argument. That was my logic, but we could do six. Do you guys right. want to do good, six? Good um, Hopefully we don't get to five. We this need is... a gavel in here. All right, so let's get the word. Let's I'm get just the trying word. to put people out of their misery at that right, point. Me, me and Mike start, right? Who's the one that just... Uh, no, oh. winner chooses. Michael just... Uh, I'm going to show you the word. Michael with the instant feedback on riveting, riveting radio, guys and gal. Hey, you know what? Oh, you know, you this is hell, riveting. You can Michael. go to hell, Michael. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you say. Here is the new word, Riz. You can either pass or play. Oh uh, no, they got the last one. Um, Mike, should Mike, we should we pass, pass or play? Or play. Move. Let's pass. Pass. Okay. 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 Right. Time for redemption. Time for redemption. You got this. All right, Patrick. Dude. Ready? Let's do it. Party. What was it again? Party. Favor. Happy. Birthday. Yay! 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 Yay!
My man. Okay. Here we go. I die. Let's get the password. Let's get the password, Rafe. Here we go. Here we go. Who picks first? Riz, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Okay. The password is. Okay. Get it. Got to learn? Yeah. Can All right. Can I see it? What is it? Show moon. Oh. Okay. Oh. All right. Ready, Ed? Ed? Yes. Water. Ocean. Great guess. Brian. Rain. Drops. Also a great guess. Morning. Ew. Good guess. Brian, sex. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Say it again. I said sex. The hell? <laughs> the hell are you talking about? <laughs> and water, huh? No way you get off that, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, bed. Think of the other Baby. <laughs> Come on, Ed. Come on, Ed. Five loud. seconds, Ed. Would you say loud? Cloud. Cloud. You guys are a disaster. No. All right, all right. No. Brian, ESP. Here we go. Curtain. Waterfall. Oh, my God. All right, let's go over these clues. Please say them again in the order in which they were I don't even received. know. I don't oh even God. know. Oh I don't even know. I don't even know what I said. Yeah, I know. It's macaroons and sex. I don't even know what I said. I got to figure out hey, how her mind Ed, works. It was water, hey, rain. Here we go. Water, water, rain, morning, sex, baby, curtain. For the love of God. Ed. Shower. Oh, thank God. Oh, you didn't even you didn't even give him a clue. You didn't even give him a clue. You just needed he to hear them all again. <laughs> so we were on to something. You were. <laughs> None of you have ever done it in the shower? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I that, thought this that, was uh, the wrist show. I don't know. I feel like Scott? A wild <laughs> departure. <laughs> no one said bathtub. Well, you know. Okay. okay. All right, Round next two. one, next uh, next password here. All right, here we go. This ought to be a train wreck. Here we go. Okay, perfect. Give it last uh, last one for us, Ed, because we're gonna get it here and it's over. No, we're Brian, you and me. Okay. All right. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, don't we through such a loop this time. <laughs> All right. I won't be, you know what? G rated from here on out. So I didn't, I thought people could did take it. Did you see what the word is? I did. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to add, I'm deferring to learn to give the first password. All right. Okay. Smart move. Brian. Looks. Out. Okay. Yes. Pretty. Woman. Also a good guess. Brian. Man. Uh, gorgeous. Mm, good guess. <sighs> Scott's in the booth laughing now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Looks don't man. look at me, Learn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Clooney. Clue. I think you want to say George. Okay, that's um, not. It, uh. it, I was going to say doctor, but okay. Did, did you listen Stop to the other words? clues? Oh, so going. He's going to say George. He's going to say did George. Did you listen to the, what everything else is? Build on what yeah. was said. Okay. Ed. Brian, here we go. Brian. It's <laughs> so bad, dude. Um, uh, Brian. People are, people are screaming at their windshields right now. Beautiful. Pretty. Yeah, that was given as a clue earlier, so you're clearly listening. Let's just go ahead and go over these. Okay. Looks pretty, man, Clooney, beautiful. Ed? <laughs> you got to give him a clue, bud. I got to give him a clue? Yeah. I, do I have to? Okay. Yes, you uh, have to. Uh, Why are you red? <laughs> Your blood pressure. My blood pressure. <laughs> oh, my God. My blood pressure. You got this. Uh, Ed. Uh, 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 I'm trying to think of words yeah. that we haven't used before. You did yeah. a good job. It's tough, isn't well, there's it? thousands. I know. I know. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> Hopefully, you get less upset with us when we're delaying like this because it is tough. Dapper, handsome. There. Yeah. Yeah. 
Dapper Dan. He uh, stayed in the building. Wow. We're done. Thank you. Thank we thank did you. it. Congratulations. Three Thanks, sweeps. Brian. Three ugly sweeps. <laughs> chest hurts. Wow. <laughs> Riveting That's radio. A... Riveting. Thank you. But we're going to take this game out back. And... <laughs> no, I love it. Thank I love you. it, too. I love it. Oh, my God. I'm sweating. I know. Calm down, man. I'm sweating. All right. Let's take a break. Jeez. Calm down. We'll come back and uh, we'll reset. <laughs> <laughs> some emails. We'll do some emails. Got some emails going next. <laughs> So last week, uh, I think it was a week ago today, I got stung by three yellow jackets. Mm -hmm. uh, Learn's husband, Tim, got stung by three yellow jackets. Yes. Assaulted. Assaulted. <laughs> yeah. So, that's right. Assaulted by, mm -hmm. by uh, yellow jackets. And then I read the story, uh, and it makes what Tim and I went through. And thanks for your concern, guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like a walk in a park. Headline, man stung by nearly 2,000 bees. Hospitalized in Sun City West. That's uh, Arizona. Oh my God! Two thousand bees. I guess this guy worked at a golf course. Uh, and he encountered a beehive, and they're like, uh, they're saying it's it's unclear what what exactly led to the attack, but somehow the guy disturbed a hive. And here are some witnesses describing what that looked like when two thousand bees were descending on this golf course worker. We were moving down the fairway. We saw a worker working. He stopped and he started swinging his arms. Didn't pay a lot of attention to it at first. As we went down closer, I started to pick up my ball. All of a sudden, the bees started attacking me. So I, I got my golf cart and started heading back. By the time he turned around, he was completely covered with bees. He probably had a foot of bees on him. Can you? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm imagining if, if you're. If you're swarmed with bees and they're all over your body, you, you just go, I'm done. That's it. That's it. It's over. Can you imagine what, looking at somebody crossing a field with a foot of bees on them? Just looking like a bee mask? Like, you know, a bee costume? How many? Foot of bees. How a many? Foot thick? Uh, I guess so. Or maybe from head to... To, to neck. To uh, neck. Yeah, here to here oh, or something. Man. Or like... How many stings does it take to kill you? Now, if you don't have to be allergic... They made a Tootsie Roll, mm -hmm. a Tootsie Pop commercial. Like, so how many stings would, would kill you? Even if you're not allergic. Right. You know, one, if, you, if, you know, if you're allergic to bees, you know, could, could kill you. Anaphylactic shock. Uh, but what if you're not allergic? Yeah, it's okay. like they're a venom overload. I'm sure. How many bee stings would it take to kill you? I'm looking up, uh, experts have said that more, because we're seeing more, more stories of swarms, and they're saying that weather's playing a big role in it. So throughout, um, you know, your state, if you have a lot of rain, increased rainfall can lead to a boom in bee populations. Mm, boom in bees. The lethal, bees dose, man. the lethal dose required for an average male is 226 milligrams. Approximate amount of venom in one honeybee is 59. Whoa, that oh, does not seem like that many. Death. Stings per lethal dose... Well, this guy was rushed to the hospital. It He's says, intubated in, in, like, critical condition. It says if they're not, like, in, like, key uh, places, because this one guy died in England. He had one sting is this, in this particular part of his neck. And he went, wasn't allergic? It went into his bloodstream. Um, it was, like, on the jugular or something. This says if it was just normal, like, you know, your arm, not a lethal spot, stings per lethal dose would be 3,831. Average honeybee. Stings on an average weighted man. And this How guy, many? Say that again. Three thousand eight hundred and thirty. Oh, this guy was only stung two thousand times. Yeah, what if you're tough? He'll be all right. What if you? I died from one in the jugular, though. That's why. Well, that's. That's got to be now fake. That I don't know, fake. But. That that's considered the full lethal dose. It says there are many more horrible things that can happen to the human body well before three thousand stings. Yeah. Yikes. That's just the, 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 the fatal dose of venom hmm. put into the human body. That's what this guy was stung by, uh, or swarmed by two, at least 2,000 bees and stung them many times. So. That's wild, man. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, my, my foot's fine, guys. Thank you. You all right? Good. <laughs> I'm fine after a week. I'm good. Uh, let's get some of your emails. Rich at 1057thepoint.com. 
Emails are brought to you by Big Dick's Brick and Mailbox. There's no box too big or too small. Big Dick's does them all. Listener Kyle from Illinois here. I listened to the start of Friday show about Riz's high water bill, and I have quite the first water bill story. Bought my home in 2009. It was formerly used as a saddle club where horse shows and events took place. Sat vacant for a few years until I purchased the property and uh, finished the building on the property into a home. The very first water bill he got. This is right after college. He's 22 years old. And his water bill came for 265,000 gallons oh. of water. 265,000 gallons, which would be how much? Well, your bill was for, uh, what, an average of 40,000 gallons? Uh, yeah, well, my bill was $995. He doesn't have the price here, but he said, imagine the shock in receiving the hard kick to the wallet as the first bill of ownership, uh, home ownership, 265,000 gallons of water. Uh, I think uh, what, what turned out, it was like it was a mistake. And there yeah, was something and, that broke underneath the ground. As I mentioned... The, war, the people are, are, were cool on the phone. They're coming by today to investigate. All right. Oh, they are. They're really going to make sure. They're making sure you didn't, you, you didn't oh, start no, a no, lake. Oh, they're Yeah, they're, they're coming out today. <laughs> Dang. They're going to check, check your woods sponges. and be like, yeah. They're checking, they're, checking, they're, they're checking the meter. They're doing all thing. This has I mean, to be a leak, right? Like somewhere. But it, I wonder where that liability becomes your own, you know? Well, if it is a leak, all you have to do is say, I fixed the leak. Mm -hmm. Or give them documentation that you fixed the leak. And they, they usually prorate your... Okay. Or whatever they they will uh, help you with the bill, but yeah, I, I definitely didn't use nine hundred ninety five dollars worth of water last month. <laughs> so something's wrong. Having a water park party without inviting us. That's yeah, fun. I don't operate yeah, Hurricane Harbor. <laughs> I bet you their water bill is less. Maybe it's those bees, dude. Yeah, Ooh. they need water jackets. to multiply. You yeah, had a right. yellow jacket's yep. nest. I'm starting to see some dot connection. <laughs> right. <laughs> the bees tapped into your hose, dude. Could be. The bees tapped into Could. your hose. Could bees got all Be. up in your hose, man? Next, that's war. <laughs> we hear daily what the Team Riz members' favorite part of the Riz show. But what is each Riz show member's favorite part of the show or the week? Is Probably it the, 10 o'clock. Is it no. the power no. hour? I'm kidding. Is it the games, interviewing guests? What is each member's favorite part of the show? Brent. Uh, I know. I, I have fun uh, first hour, usually when we're just chopping it up. Uh, I love crap on celebrities. Mm. Uh, I love when we do emails. I love, I don't know, I you love your show. I, I love the show. I mean, I love every part of it. I love the emails because it is always so random, and I love that people take the time to actually email us. I think that is so cool, and, and so th this part that we're doing right now is my favorite part. Yeah, I would say 6 a.m. hour for me is by, by far my favorite. And then emails and games, yeah. all, the, all the fun stuff. Yeah, Rafe? Rafe? Same. Uh, well, I like the first hour when we're just chatting, and uh, this is, we go down some rabbit holes. It's very yeah. organic, and I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also love when the wheels come off a little bit <laughs> in yeah, the yeah, games yeah. and things like that. So it's all of it's fun. Scott? Uh, the opening for sure, and then I love whenever we get guests and especially legendary people. Whenever they come in, that's just really awesome. Yeah, we got uh, Jay Farrell coming in on uh, on Friday. Nice. That's a big one. Jay Farrell. The return. The return. Second timers yeah. club. Scott, you would say that because you have such an intimate time with any guest that comes in. Like, anytime anybody comes in, you get to have them first. You yeah. get to have them last. Like, they're always doing, like, liners for the show. And you get to have, like, some one-on-one -on -one time. So I could see why you'd love that. And it's kind of fun. You get to see who uh, is actually nice. Like, they'll be incredible in the room, but you can right. see how they are in and outside. And So true. Yeah. Just getting those moments. Like, talking Cardinal baseball with Billy Corgan. It's yeah, that's crazy. cool. cool. Just uh, the coolest. Next. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And Scott? Uh, hey. This is an interesting question. It's talking about our routines. Mm -hmm. Do y'all still do your soccer ball kick around in the morning before the show? Oh, I remember We used to do that at the, uh, the old station. So I, right. I, I had a soccer ball at my feet at all you times. You did, man. Like I, no matter what. I, I came into meetings with a soccer ball at my, at my feet. Because it was in the morning. You know, we're there at 4 or 5 a.m. So in that hall, nobody was ever there. And one day, these guys started kind of kicking it with me. And then in the morning, for those that are newer to the show, like the last four or five years, uh, those first couple years, <laughs> we would go out and play sticks. There was like these um, like stanchion light type things out in the the concrete, what do you call that, like the atrium? Courtyard. Oh, I thought courtyard. we would use the ashtray. The ash, oh, that's what it was. The ash, like the ash stashes, mm -hmm. like the stand-up ashtrays. Yeah, that, that were the, like as tall as those lights. Like, yeah, they, you know, they get rid of your cigarette butts. Yeah, two and a half foot, three, three foot, and we would have those, and we would kick them across over the, the waterfall and try to hit those things and score points. Yeah. And uh, that was a 
that was a habit for a long time. A couple that was, years. That well, was our pre-show ritual. And then we moved here, and then we don't have that. Soccer ball's gone. This yeah, is, we this is not as... Kick a soccer ball around for 15 yeah, we, minutes up until the show started. I used to chat come, about that. come into work, and like all you guys would be out in the courtyard, like because I would get there like an hour later than you, and I would come in, and Jeff would just like kick the ball to me as I'm like walking yeah. into work, and I'd kick it to Moon, and like that was like the coolest thing. I'd totally forgotten about yeah. that. Yeah, well, you know, and you know what started that is before the show, um, about, I don't know, 45 minutes before the show, 35 minutes before the show, when we first started it, Riz smoked cigarettes. Mm. And we would go out, you, you would smoke cigarettes, and we would, we'd always go out and hang out with you. And yeah. It was the wintertime. We're all going, what are we doing out here? This is ridiculous. Yeah, that's what it was. I'd go out and have a smoke. So I'd start my, I'd, I'd, bring, I'd bring a ball, and then Jeff and I would start kicking it, and then we'd turn it into a game. Guys, see how cool ritual. smoking is? Dude. It's <laughs> well, people the, outside the crazy, people outside, yeah. You, yeah. Quit, you quit right around that same time. Yeah. And then, uh, and then we kept we kept it going. But this office is not as uh, it's not conducive. To it's that. not soccer ball friendly. Well, we're also on the second floor, and there's no there's no real area to do it. Mm -hmm. We had the big fountain. We used to kick it over the fountain. Yeah, John's yeah. office is pretty big. Maybe maybe there. you would love that. Uh, next. Uh, let's see. Listening to Friday. Uh, hey, gang. Right. Listening hey. to Friday's podcast and learned to mention Batman, the animated series, being one of her favorite shows to watch. I've rewatched them with my kids and noticed that there are some very adult feelings of grief, shame, anger, and so on. What cartoons have you ever gone back to watch and picked up on adult themes presented in the show? Another one came to mind was the first episode of Animaniacs throwing jokes about a certain president dreaming he was president. Thanks. Love the show. Miss you, Jeff. That's Nick. Uh, I'll tell you what, Ren and Stimpy, when I watched as a kid, and you watch those as, as, uh, as uh, yep. adults. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very adult-themed things in there. Um, oh. The Simpsons. Oh, for sure. Rugrats, too, which is all about babies, but lots of adult themes went through that yeah. show. I'll tell you, the greatest cartoons, the greatest shows ever made are ones that are made for kids and adults, mm -hmm. and the kids don't know they're, 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 it's got adult humor, and the adults are kind of missing some of the, the things that it's doing for kids' brains. Like, that's what makes all these movies enormous. That's why Shrek and all these huge animated movies are great, because the parents go, and there's plenty to absorb. Yeah. Yep. I think there was a, and I mentioned this Friday, I thought, but there was a movement at those late cartoons around that time, same time, like Gargoyles, <laughs> X-Men, the animated series, like, they had some adult themes that as a kid you may not have picked up on but like that were mirroring societal which that's what marvel's always done they kind of mirrored some societal things that were happening and uh so yeah i think when you go back and watch those shows like some of those afternoon shows from like man late 90s early aughts they started dipping their toe mm. in like that kind of stuff remember the show eon flux oh yeah, yeah. yeah. came on that like was, after daria that was part of liquid tv yeah, yeah. not a great movie Right, so, was it Liquid Liquid Television on MTV? Yeah. Liquid MTV. Television started it, yeah, but that but that one. It that, was Syphil and Ollie. It was right? it was Syphil and Ollie, it, Alan Flux. And, it was the and guy. It. it was Daria too, and then and then it the was, head. It was the guy with the the purple gargoyle that lived in his head, in mm -hmm. his skull. You yeah, remember that one. That one was free. Was that sweet. called the head? I, yeah, yeah, maybe. We got time for one more because it's well, got a one good more. question. Quickly, quickly. End. Good morning, ladies and gents. I just wanted to stop by and say thank you so much. After hearing all the discussions about you guys and everybody else using bidets and how wonderful they are, I pulled the trigger and purchased one. I didn't go too far price-wise because I was uncertain about how I would feel. But let me say I'm a changed man. I installed it the other day, and after a successful 15-minute practice run, I couldn't wait to get the full experience. Oh, boy, game changer. Thanks again. Love the show. Three out of five stars. P.S. Are you supposed to still wipe afterwards? <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Uh, yes, question? I mean sometimes depends on uh, depends on. Well, yeah, you gotta you gotta dry and, and you gotta dry. You gotta dry and check. It's called the the dry and check. Yeah, but you gotta save on toilet paper though for sure. Yeah, yeah. Your paperwork's not gonna be as expensive as it was without the bidet. Mm, but, I need to get a new one. But certainly you have to check. I mean, you, you, the, the dry and yeah. check. You don't want to. I need to get a new bidet. You want you don't want humidity or mystery. Hmm. Broke mine. Just wrote it too hard. Did you? Plug a hair dryer <laughs> in next to the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of those automatic hand dryers. Just put your butt yeah, in. Yeah. Hey, you twerk How did you break it? It, it cracked. The, pl the, the newer one? The one I had the dude it? wipe 1000. No, I didn't, get the, I didn't get the heated one yet. Oh, I thought you had that. No, that, that's... You know what? What? I'm, my, my wife stole me a birthday gift. <laughs> well, there you go. Huh. All right, dude. Yeah. She wanted to get me a Blackstone. Oh, but you even said you're never going to use that. I'm never going to use it. Is that a grill? It's the griddle oh. that goes outside. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I made fun of it. 
yeah, it's cool. I'll be honest with you. Why don't you get one and just give it to your old boy, Moon? Like, I'll be honest with you. It's cool. <laughs> well, get it. Try it. And if you don't like it, give it to Moon. But no, but I don't. Mm -hmm. First of all, I don't want to give anything to him. Oh. Secondly, it's going to be one of those things I use it for a week. That's so messed up, man. I use it for a week, and then it's going to sit there. and and Yes. And like I'm going to be mad girls. every time <laughs> I walk by. Done nothing but been your boy for 20 oh, years. Oh, I'll get you a bidet. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't like my bidet, I'll give it to you, okay? Gross. Whatever, oh, man. It's straight up 9 o'clock. We'll take a break. We'll come back with some news. Today, guys, is National Cheap Flight Day. Ooh. I'll give you the details. Okay. It may not be as ooh as you think. Ah. Uh. Turn off. Blow a horn. Good times. All right. Welcome back to the program. Let's do some news. Oh, yeah. We're going to do some news. And your news being sponsored by Martin Jetco Heating and Air Conditioning, more reliable than your news source. So if you've been waiting to buy plane tickets for the holidays, man, it's cheap flight day, national cheap flight day. Supposedly, today is the best day to buy tickets. Okay. Some people say, though, it's a lot of hype. And it's been a thing since 2015. So a site called Cheap O Air says that according to their data, holiday plane tickets tend to hit rock bottom today. And that's not totally baseless. Prices do usually start dropping off in June, keep going down through most of August. So now is a good time to buy holiday plane tickets for a lot of us. But experts say there, there isn't really one best day. Cheap flight day is just based on the overall average, and it really depends on when and where you're flying. So in general, the best prices tend to be one to three months before you fly or two to eight months if you're flying to another country. Just don't wait until the last minute expect to find crazy deals a week before you fly. Mm -hmm. According to one expert, deals like that used to be a thing, but they don't exist anymore. That's not a thing anymore. Aww. Felt that. Yeah, you can't go like a week out and expect to buy something cheap. Mm-mm. No, I've been feeling that. And there's, there's a lot fewer options now. They're trying to fill these flights. They reduced all the, all the routes. So if you wait last minute, you're, yeah, connect, you're screwed. You're connecting two or three times. Uh, I know uh, Learn's uh, husband, Tim, is not uh, the best flyer. Yeah. He doesn't love it. He's getting better, though. Like, we, uh, we've been doing a lot of, like, exposure therapy, which honestly is the best thing to do if you have flight anxiety is to take more flights. I know that sounds insane. Oh, I thought, you, I thought you meant, like, somebody walks in with a trench coat and just, poof, yeah, like, oh, opens it up. Hey, and there's nothing hey, hey. You better get on that plane. It's called exposure <laughs> therapy, okay? I'm well, trying to help you out. If Tim is listening <laughs> or if you're afraid to fly, it's earmuffs time. Oh, great. Okay. It is earmuffs time. A new report found that near misses where two planes almost collide are a lot more common than you'd think. So according to a leaked FAA report, there were at least 46 involving commercial airliners in the U.S. just last month. Mm. So more than one per day in July. This is, on, this is in air? Or on we the just never hear about them. This is in the air, yes. Uh, Their flight uh, patterns are going, they're literally like perpendicular. It could be on the ground too on the ground or in the air. Before you freak out too much, there hasn't been a major plane crash in the U.S. in 14 years, which okay. is a record. Okay. And because of newer safety features like collision warnings, um, that that's, you know, we're good. But when you think of how big planes are and how fast they're moving, some of these near misses really have been pretty close. And they're more likely to happen near airports. Uh, just two weeks ago, an American Airlines flight was taken off in Phoenix when it banked left instead of right and veered directly into the path of a Southwest flight. Whoa. They came within about a third of a mile of hitting each other, which is... Too close. That's way too close. <laughs> near misses on the ground are even more common and a lot closer than that. Back in February, two planes in Austin got cleared to land on the same runway and came within 100 feet of each other while going about 150 miles an hour. Hey, this yeah. just in for my mom listening to the show. She says, I will take my chances in the air over driving on 270 in St. Louis. Yeah, People man. are Amen, idiots. Amen, sister. Yeah. JB knows what's up. This is no, uh, This I mean, this is quite different, but did you see that uh, that crash? It was either this year or last year with the skydivers and the two... 
the two skydiving planes. Oh, the planes hit each other. <laughs> hit each other yes. while they were falling out of the plane. Yeah. Yo, that's one of the wildest videos ever. Because, you know, everybody's filming it from 15 different angles. So you can see it multiple ways, multiple times. And holy yeah. smokes, what a terror, uh, like, what a terrifying situation. I was going to say, like, I guess the only, and this is awful, here we go. But I just think, like, if something happens, plane crashes, and you're on that, it's going to be fast. But my, my fear of flying is whenever I've gone to, like, Europe... Going over water freaks me out more than anything. Like, I'll, I'll tr air travel over land any day. But you get me out in those oceans and I become a total freak. I can't deal. Mm. You know? Mm. Back to you. <sighs> well, so is this really happening more than it used to? And, and it sounds like the answer is yes, partly because we've just got so many planes in the sky now. Around 3 million people fly each day. But it sounds like the main factor is overworked air traffic controllers. Wow. So in the past decade, the number of flights has increased 5%, but the number of fully trained air traffic controllers is down 10%. Can we yeah. focus on this? Can we rec can we make this better? Like, there's certain professions in the world that just we have to have top tier. Yeah, top tier. We have to have the top shelf. Nobody have a bad day. Good pay. They have help. They have the day the days that they need off. They have literally, they're paid well. They're educated. And you have to work hard to get those jobs, yes. Mm -hmm. I need to have air traffic controllers living their best lives every yeah. day. And if they're not, they have mental health days, and then somebody else amazing comes in. So we don't have to deal with this. Can we just have that? Agreed. It seems like they should drop a ton of money on that department. I think they, uh, they're they paid well, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they are. Then why are we having issues Their here? minimum should be probably like 200 high stress to 250 job. grand. It is one of the highest stress jobs uh, in the world. Then mental health days and, and backup people to mm -hmm. fill in, I feel. Hmm. Well... Speaking of uh, workers, let's be honest, okay? No one is operating at peak efficiency all week long at work. No. <laughs> there, are some, there are some lulls, and uh, when would you think the biggest lull will be? Like Monday morning, like, ugh, right? Uh, Friday. Friday, for sure. People are checked out by Thursday. But that's not when most workers are the laziest. I See, I would have thought Monday mornings. Midweek. I would have thought, coming off the weekend, uh, Sunday's it, it takes a little while to, to ramp up, to, 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 to get going for the week. Right. A new study used computers to determine when workers are most and least productive. Okay. They looked at metrics like typing speed, typing errors, and mouse activity. And it was comprehensive. The data was from almost 800 workers over the course of two years. In the end, they found that workers are the laziest. And the least productive in the office. Show me. Friday afternoon. Let's go, baby. Yeah. My people. Okay, not shocking. <laughs> Mondays are also on the lower end. Now, the study didn't specifically send when, say when workers are the most productive, but according to the data, the general trend is for workers to be more productive as the week goes on before dropping off at the end of the week. Mornings are also better than afternoons. So it's probably safe to say that workers are the most locked in Wednesday and Thursday mornings. Yeah. So get her done, guys. Mm -hmm. My energy today is bit like I feel like I'm having like a manic episode. You came in today. <laughs> I'm like, ready to work. You ran I'm, down the hallway. Sharp like, shoved me against your, the wall real hard. Bed. Yeah. Fr come Friday. Knock me down. Totally <laughs> jello up here. <laughs> you read it raring to go. All right, we gotta uh, we gotta take a break. That's your news. We'll take a break. We'll do a quick sports report. Also, I got to uh, I got to play a little interview I did with Joseph Newgarden, who is an IndyCar driver. Oh, yeah. We got a big IndyCar race coming up this weekend, the Bomberito 500 over at Worldwide Technology Raceway. So I talked to uh, Joseph Newgarden, who is a three-time champ of the race over at Gateway. Four. Four times. I think so. You're asking us. Are you you're the one. That talked I'm the one that talked to him. I will f we'll find out together. <laughs> Even though I already talked to him last week. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll play you back that interview uh, after the break. It's 919. So we've, uh, we've all been golfing before, right? We'll all hit the links. You've never? Mm -hmm. Learn. I've hit a ball or two, but I've never. But you've actually, never actually gone to a golf course. I've gone to a golf course, but I never actually enrolled in golfing. Like, enrolled. I've hit a ball at a golf course. I've never done like nine holes. Okay. Told you my experience the last time I golfed. I took like 15 years off because I was like, I freaking hate this sport. It's I hate the things. worst. I hate things I'm not good at. I don't like this. This is the worst. 
And then it's remember, boring. And my first job was I was a caddy. I worked <laughs> at a country club as a caddy at a golf club. And uh, John Johnny Venus, who's got a PGA card, the guy's trained. He went to school for it. Mm -hmm. He's great. He was like, "Come on, man, just of come out." Of course. I got dressed out. I looked like Johnny Cash. I was all black <laughs> on black. I looked so good. It was so awesome. I I went up there. He said, "Here, man. Here's my new my new driver. This four hundred and eighty dollar driver, or whatever. Here you go. Try this one." I took one whack. And the ball went, and kind of like was went over a few feet. No, 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 that was not it. Johnny goes, oh, can I see my club? And he grabs it. I destroyed it on one swing. It right. dented the entire bottom. I never even knew you could do that. I didn't know you could damage That's golf incredible. clubs. I damaged it in one swing, and I never took one well, again. There's been a huge so boom fun. in golf since the pandemic. Maybe because it's one of the only sports people play hammered. And you're solitary. <laughs> you can play it solitary. I love top golf. I love that. I, I love like that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm thinking let's let's ju let's just focus on golf course. Okay. Right now. Yeah, Somebody golf. polled 1,500 golfers across the U.S. to find out which states drink the most beer while pretending they're being athletic. Uh huh. <laughs> and congratulations to Florida, Makes yeah. sense. where the average golfer drinks 4.8 beers per 18 holes. You get better by the fourth one. I mean, you're just crushing it. Yeah, but you're also like, okay, so I know people do uh, golf in like the late fall and the winter here, mm -hmm. but I mean, are they drinking and golfing in the same manner? Probably yeah. not. Uh, I got the numbers from Missouri. Give it to us. So us here in Missouri, we drink 4.2 beers around. Not bad. Not, not bad. bad. That's pretty good. Did they take into account that in Missouri it's tall boys? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> when they did these measurements. They said beers. 4.2 beers per round of golf here in Missouri. Uh, who drinks the least? Utah. 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 1.1 beers per 18 rounds. I bet That's you they're not goals. good golfers out there. I bet you a lot of those places probably don't serve beer. Right? And if they do, it's, it's 3%. <clears throat> yeah. Well, they also polled golfers in the U.K. Where, where golfing while buzzed isn't all that common, apparently. Their, their average is less than half a beer per round. So they don't. So when they golf out in England... They don't drink. Well, they're gentlemen over there. No, they're drinking the rest of the day. They're, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they're, they're not drinking at least on the course. Listen, here in the States, when you golf, I mean, you got to attach your cooler right yeah. to the golf cart. It's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Their I beers are it. also like 12% over there. So one one UK beer, they're probably like, whoo. Yeah. Skipping. Drinking that do, dragon's do, 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 milk. Do. Yeah. Right, let's, uh, let's do sports. All right, Moon. What do you got? Sports presented by DraftKings at Casino Queen. Think, uh, think you know football? Bet on it at DraftKings at Casino Queen Sportsbook. The Pittsburgh Pirates turned an infield single and a bunt into a rally that prevented Adam Wainwright from getting that 199th career win. A five-run fifth inning, all of those runs coming against Wainwright, led the Pirates to a 6-3 to three victory last night in Pittsburgh. Disagreements where the strike zone were, was uh, led to three cardinal ejections, including a career first for rookie outfielder Jordan Walker. Hey, he, right. he was tossed after an eight inning, uh, eighth inning at bat, and Wilson Contreras and manager Ali Marble were already in the clubhouse after being ejected an inning earlier. Uh, they're going to try it again for a little, little, little oh, bit of day baseball. I don't think it matters. Whoa. A little day baseball, 11.35 for some day baseball in uh, Pittsburgh today. Now, the Contreras thing, he was he was angry. He was drawing lines all around the uh, the home plate, and he got ejected, and it's going viral already because yeah. he, he was upset. He spiked a... Uh, Spiked, spiked, his uh, spiked his bat down. Speaking of spikes, Tampa Bay Buccaneers have found a new quarterback to replace Tom Brady, and it is Baker Mayfield. Baker, the number one draft pick in 2018, beat out 2021 second-round pick Kyle Trask for the starting job. The team says he's got more experience and understands the playbook, quote, just a little bit better. Baker signed a one-year, $4 million deal with Tampa Bay, although incentives incentives can push that past $8.5 million. He says, quote, I, I know how talented I am. I know what type of leader I am. Now it's time for the real thing. We're about to have the real games, and everybody's excited here. The Chicago White Sox have had a dreadful season, and they might have hit rock bottom yesterday. Oh, this was on Monday, but I saw the video uh, yesterday. you got to check this out. We'll post it on the blog. Mariners ace Luis Castillo did something we've never seen before in Major League Baseball. What? The guy threw the same pitch 47 times in a row. Wow. 47 fastball, fastball, <laughs> fastball, fastball. And the White Sox still crumbled and couldn't get anything going. And people were laughing. People were making fun of him. Twitter exploded. Why? Uh, because, I mean, 
you just don't see that. I mean, he's basically I mean, I he's basically there. Okay. he's basically taunting them. Oh. That's the entire time. Here's my fastball. Try One to trick hit it. pony. Yep. Uh, James Harden's bank account is going to be five zeros lighter this morning because the NBA has slapped a perennial, the perennial All Star with a huge hundred thousand dollar fine mm. for saying that he wouldn't play for the 76ers despite being under contract. I got all the details, but the NBA announced uh, that the um, that he's going to be fined a hundred thousand dollars by the NBA for public comments on August 14th and 17th, indicating that he would not perform the services called for under his player contract unless traded to another team. Um, I got all the details up on the blog, but that's that's a heck of a fine, man. Not uh, that's not little, even though the guy is owed thirty million dollars for the team he says he's not going to play nice for. Nice to be able to afford that. Yep, I'm moving that's your sports because doing the bull dance, feeling the flow. All working right, here's it, working it. Oh, sorry, they need to step on that. <laughs> Don't step on that, man. That's the greatest. Here's my uh, chat with uh, IndyCar driver Joseph Newgarden. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the interview just stopped. Oh, uh, hmm. uh, yeah, hey, so my whole computer just, Did just, it just went shot to crap. I'm sorry. Whoa. No, that was my computer. Just oh, okay. that's it. Just decided we're not. Oh. We don't need to work anymore. All right, great. Hey, just so you guys know, the the race weekend is uh, <laughs> coming up. Coming up Saturday, Sunday, Worldwide Technology Raceway, Bomberito Automotive Group 500 <laughs> is on Sunday. Get your tickets wwtraceway.com. <laughs>Donnie's going to kill me for going so late. My apologies, Donnie. We just had so much show today. So much fun. So much show, so much fun. Today's Pappy's Recapping. Brought to you by Pappy's Smokehouse St. Peter's, your summer barbecue headquarters, Highway 70 and Mid-Rivers Mall Drive. Uh, everything we covered on the show today, including local news, a whole bunch of news about stuff in the air. Uh, there was a, a guy asking a Southwest pilot if he was drunk, and that did not end well. Check out the video there. And also low staffing and more close calls. The FAA is responding to increased scrutiny on aviation safety. Check it all out, 1057thepoint.com slash Riz. The podcast title is "Bitch Better Have My Pesos." All right. <laughs> see what that, we see what happened there. Yeah, it was a great intro today. Check out the podcast wherever you get your podcast. Uh, tomorrow, Craigslist Freak of the Year playoffs continue. Another round one matchup for Cash Champs going at it. Uh, two of the ads moving on to the next round. All right, anything else, ladies no. and gentlemen? Uh, All right. No. We leave you with a selection from our Teamers member of the day, brought to you by Hot Shots, hotshotsnet.com slash teamriz. From St. Louis, by way of Germany, Nathan Hay. Hey! Hey! Is our Teamers member of the day. Nathan wants to hear this song. Here it is, and we will see you tomorrow. Donnie is next. Goodbye. Energy up. Uh, catchphrase.